Racing, presented by the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. And welcome to Texas Motor Speedway. Everything big in Texas. This track, no different. One of the top facilities in the country, the Taj Mahal of racetracks. It has its own dance club, its own health club, a sauna, and it's all trackside. Today's race, so big, people are having trouble getting in here. A record-setting weekend in terms of attendance. There's a nice way to beat the traffic. If you could afford maybe something a little more extravagant, you can get in this way. Over 400,000 people this weekend, and some arriving by chopper to catch the best drivers in the world, competing for over $5 million in purse money. Every fan wants to be here. This was voted the sixth biggest sporting event in the country, even bigger than the Masters in the U.S. Open, and we are here, our traveling studio, the Hollywood Hotel, we go to where the races are. Hi, and how are you? Along with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, with you from our mobile studio. <laughs> nice hat, by the way. Dressing for the occasion. Hope you uh, sprung forward with your clock, and uh, glad you're with us on April Fool's Day. Uh, speaking of which, we'll hear from Jeff in just a moment. I kid, you know that. <laughs> the eyes of Texas that all eyes on Dale Earnhardt Jr., who won his first Winston Cup race here last year. Today, he starts on the pole, and in just a few minutes, Daryl Waltrip will have a special conversation with Little E. You won't want to miss that. Last week, nobody missed round two of Jeff Gordon versus Tony Stewart. Stewart in the 20 Home Depot car was fined $10,000 and put on five months probation by NASCAR after he retaliated to this little brush that he and Jeff Gordon had on the last lap. It's part of a rivalry in racing that some would love to build. Let's get a check on that on Pit Road with our Genie Zalaska. Well, thanks, Chris. Jeff, you know what they say. One time is a coincidence. The second time, maybe something else going on here. So everyone wants to get to the bottom of this. Is there a rivalry here? Oh, you're talking about with Tony? No, not at all. You know, it's just two guys that are very aggressive and, and also very competitive. Uh, Tony's a great race car driver, and, you know, I, I enjoy racing with him. Uh, we've had some great battles, but uh, we've also, you know, ha have gotten together a couple times. But, uh, you know, I don't think he and I think of it as rivalries. We just think of it as uh, hard racing. All right, for the other side of the story, here's Steve Burns. Thanks, Jeannie. With Tony Stewart. Tony, quite simply, has too much been made of what happened at Bristol last week. Uh, it normally is in this sport. Uh, you know, I guess if we, if drivers would start beating their wives and start drinking and driving, it, it would make issues like that a lot, uh, a lot less... Uh, sensitive to people but uh, I, I think that's just a, a testimony to how uh, how good this sport really is and, and you know when when something that's that small as that was uh, you know it didn't cost anybody any points it didn't you know I didn't put him in the wall all I did is turn him around on pit lane so uh, I think it's definitely been uh, blown out of proportion it normally does that's just the way this sport is uh, you know you, you have people that, that want to be on both sides of the fence and uh, you know when that happens and, and this sports so clean it does get blown out of proportion but that's what makes NASCAR racing what it is it's fun for everybody that way Good luck today. Thanks, pal. Let's go back to Chris. All right, thanks, guys. Wow, some stinging uh, remarks from uh, Tony Stewart. How about our picks? Jeff Gordon has never finished better than 25th, but our Jeff Hammond thinks Gordon can win the race today. Larry Mack going with Ricky Rudd out on a limb. We told Daryl not to pick Sterling Marlin, so he went with Dale Earnhardt Jr. Hey, the Bush race yesterday, Jeff Burton did well. The Roush team, of course, Burton has done well at this track, could bounce back. They need something. There is another team that could use a boost. You got that right, Chris. Right now, Joe Gibbs' is operation needs that little kick in the pants. Right now, Bobby Labonte's on the outside pole. He's in good position to try to pick up the slack and get back on track. He needs it really bad. But another guy, Tony Stewart, his teammate, way back in the back of the field, but he really needs to be able to try to rebound after last week's controversy and show that he is the champion. I think he can be. I spoke to some of his crew members. They said they love his car despite where he is starting from. All right, Jeff, we here at Fox know that some fans are upset and have been contacting us because their cable system does not carry FX. With three Winston Cup races coming up on FX in May and June, starting with Richmond, going through the Winston and Brooklyn, you can change that by calling 1-800-FX-FX fx1 and i'll repeat that 1-800 fx fx fx1 tell them i want my nascar and i want my fx we don't want you to miss any racing this season we're getting closer to the race pole sitter dale earnhardt jr getting ready to go and defend his title coming up next our interview with dale jr as he discusses the loss of his father the last two or three years we really got on the same level to where we were we were talking about things and enjoying the same things and, and our conversations were interesting to each other and you could see it, you know, you can understand it. I, I really would like, one thing I like, would you ever drive a black three car?
Mulder's death was only the beginning. I can't truly believe I'm really standing here. Fox tonight, The X-Files returns. They're here to save us. With seven consecutive new episodes. <laughs> and nothing you imagined can compare to what happens next. I think this is insanity. You found him and you don't even know what you got. Tell me it's true. Tell me. The X-Files, all new, starting at 9, 8 central, tonight on Fox. Remember Jared from Subway? Turns out he's inspired a lot of people. He's still looking good to show you the way. His name is Jared and he'll lead you to Subway. For seven sandwiches, for six grams of batter left. Subway, eat fresh. Come by your local participating Subway restaurant today and get three regular footlong subs for only $9.99. Here in Texas, Dale Earnhardt Jr. won his first Winston Cup race with his father by his side, looking on with a proud smile. And while Dale Earnhardt Sr. is no longer with us, we expect Earnhardt Jr., the driver, to keep on driving. Darrell Waltrip sat down with Little Lee to discuss his emotional ride. try to maintain I put a picture on my wall me and him and just always remember that we you know what we did together and just try to you know get on with it I'm just I'm just a, a friend mm -hmm. and you're his son how how here's the guy that's your mentor your teacher your friend your buddy somebody you can go on the track and knock around a little bit how you keep going honestly Daryl you know you just the only thing that I can, uh, the only thing that makes me feel better or, or the things, that, the thing that gets me up in the morning uh, and gets me to the racetrack and, and, you know, gets me over to the shop is, is uh, just knowing that if, if, if he was, you know, if he was, if he had the opportunity, he'd be on the door at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, oh, yeah, you know, and, you don't get up till 2, but. Right. So, I mean. I can just, you know, those are the things, either I do a lot of things, I know it's only been a, a little more than a month, but I, I, I do a lot of things that I never did before, and I only do them because I know he wanted me to do them. When we were at Daytona and I was watching the race, obviously then, I saw Schrader, that's why I knew. I, I didn't know what, I just knew it was bad. And then, uh, I saw you take off running. What, 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 what was, what happened in, who, who kind of, what did they Nobody said anything to me. I just, you know, it, I had no uh, real concerns of of a serious injury or anything like that. It just, you know, when you see your dad getting in an accident, especially at a big track like that, you want to get over there and make sure everything's cool. So I was just, I didn't, you know, I'd finished second. I was pretty happy. And I knew he would uh, be happy for Michael, and I knew he would probably be pretty happy for me. And... Uh, probably a little upset he he had uh, wrecked and all, but and uh, you know I just you know had this uh, urge to go see him right away. So you are Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now, are, do you feel a lot of pressure to live up 
to what your dad has done? Well, I've always had, you know, people have always asked me that, and maybe it's more relevant now than before, but I don't feel a lot of pressure to be able to equal any of his, his, uh, his success or anything like that or try to be uh, personally what he was or, or be a reminder to people. I, you know, it's a, that's an awful lot to ask somebody, and it's really unhealthy. What is your role going to be in, just say, the company, DEI? It's basically um, Teresa's responsibility right now, and she is handling it like a champ. And everybody, including myself, is, is right there with her, trying to help her however we can help her. And I trust uh, uh, Teresa. I would never have told Dad this, but I trust her almost more than I do him. You know, but uh, she's an astounding person. So and she's uh, a strong person. Yeah, she's awesome. Would you ever drive a black three car? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, it's. Uh, yeah, you know, I look at you know everything that happens from for from here on out for a long time. I'll always think, you know, what would Dad do? What would mm -hmm. his decision be on it? And I don't think that he would he would make that kind of a decision. So I probably would never do anything like that. Um, if you know you could ask me that 10, 20 years down the road, maybe so. You know, if I'm still driving race cars, that might be something that that I'd like to do. What is it going to take, or is there anything that will? give you closure to this to this tragedy oh just they'll i don't think you know you look for something one thing or or you know when you ask what is it going to take i don't think you can look at one thing and go or or, or a few things and say this is going to help or you know you just go day after day and, and you know i want to i would like to win uh you know, win races and, and, and possibly a championship one year, uh, and those things will help. Uh, if I don't, you know, I'll go do something else. You, you believe your dad went to heaven? I'm pretty, you know, pretty sure of it, actually. Um, he was, um, he was pretty, uh, pretty adamant about, you know, about, uh, you know, living right and being right. He was a special person person, you know what I'm saying? I mean, there were just things that he could think of and do, and some, and his level of common sense was was just so far beyond a lot of people that I know, and 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 I just believe he was so so way above average in, in a lot of areas, and, I, and that's why I feel pretty positive that that, that he's in heaven because um, I don't think God would pass that, pass something like that up, you know. <laughs> This week, a major victory for the Earnhardt family. Standing beside Dale Earnhardt's widow, Teresa, Florida Governor Jeb Bush signed a bill on Thursday to keep autopsy photos closed to the public unless a judge approves its release. Well, you can hear more of the interview with Dale Earnhardt Jr. on Totally NASCAR with Steve Burns on Fox Sports Net throughout the week and read the complete transcripts of the interview on the all Walter Blink at foxsports.com. Here in Texas, getting closer to the start of the race. Earnhardt Jr. won his first race here. Elliott Sadler won his first race in the Winston Cup circuit last week. MBNA proud of Sadler's accomplishment and helping the Wood Brothers to the victory. Jeff and I will be here all day to watch the race along with you on Fox. Right now, get ready to start your engine. I am the genie of the lamp. You have set me free. You have three wishes. I would like to be as clever as a fox, strong as a bear, and I would like to fly like an eagle. Then you need Red Bull Energy Drink. It vitalizes your body and your mind. Ah. Red Bull gives you wings. Oh, genie, thank you. Bye-bye. And who will grant my wishes? Inside, Puffy Pants. Introducing the 2001 Hyundai Accent GS. Freedom is calling, yeah! 
It comes with the freedom of the Hyundai Advantage, America's best warranty plan. I don't have to worry about my car because I'm covered under the 10-year warranty. And the Accent GS has the standard features you want. At just $8,899, the Accent GS adds up to a great value. Freedom is cold in here, I am. Hyundai and the Jimmy Fund, helping kids fight cancer. Use an ordinary pain rub on your arthritis, and everyone knows it. Use odor-free Asper Cream instead and get clinically proven fast-acting pain relief nobody knows about but you. Aspirin-free Asper Cream. Fast relief no one knows about but you. Athlete's foot remedies don't give you fast itch relief. Maybe it's not athlete's foot. Maybe it's foot dermatitis. And that calls for maximum strength Gold Bond medicated foot powder. Triple action Gold Bond stops itch fast, absorbs moisture, and kills odor. Gold Bond foot powder. Fast relief of everyday itch. Watch Seinfeld at 11 p.m. starting tomorrow, only on Fox 5. They say everything's bigger in Texas. Big country, big crowd, big field, and big purse, and a big speedway. Oh, yes, and big traffic, too. Yes, everything is a little bigger here in Texas. 150,000 seats are full, the infield's full. It's a packed house to watch the NASCAR Winston Cup Series here at Texas Motor Speedway on Fox, presented by Home Depot. It's a place where young guns have been blazing. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is the defending champion of this race. Matt Yoakum. And that victory one year ago also marked Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s first career top five finish, but he's been experiencing a drought 28 straight races without a top five finish. Junior, can Texas jumpstart your season one more time? I think so. Uh, we always run good here. Uh, we got a great car, and uh, this is what we need. I mean, we need a good run to, to you know, get get team going for the rest of the year and uh, going to boat whooping spree <laughs> on the pole for the third time in his career but he's chasing his third career win mike thanks matt and welcome to texas mike joy with larry mcreynolds and three-time champ daryl waltrip two drivers jeff burton and dale earnhardt jr have gotten their first win here at texas daryl young guns at this racetrack well it really is it's it's a fast racetrack and the thing i don't like about this place is 97 the first year we came here we wrecked in the first turn never even got a lap under our belt next year we we made two laps that year before we wrecked last year we made 18 laps so I'm worried about the start, Larry. But the reason then and now, there's only one groove at the bottom of this racetrack. These drivers have got to use patience and try to get that second groove where we can see side-by-side -side racing. Well, let's have a look at the Winston Cup point standing. Six races into the 2001 season. There's Dale Jarrett, the point leader, Gordon Marlin Benson, and Park. But at the bottom of your screen, fellows in trouble include Jeff Burton in 36th and Bobby Labonte, the defending series champ, 19th in points. And how about the top rookie in the series, Kevin Harvick, 13th in Winston Cup points. And did he have a big day here yesterday, winning the NASCAR Bush Series 300-mile race on Fox in fine fashion. Here is the editor of Speedway Illustrated, Dick Bergeron. 25-year-old Californian Kevin Harvick is the hottest young driver in big league stock car racing. Just three weeks ago, in just his third ever Winston Cup start in Atlanta, Harvick won big. Today, he starts 33rd in a car that would have otherwise been driven by Dale Earnhardt and number three to Steve Burns. Well, Dick, defending series champion Bobby Labonte hasn't had a top 10 since Rockingham five weeks ago, 19th in the points. But... If there's ever a track where he could turn it around, it's here in Texas in four starts. He's been third three times, and today he starts from the front row alongside Dale Earnhardt Jr. to Jeannie Zalasco. Well, Steve, for the most part, Texas brings back fond memories for Jeff Burton. This is the site of his first Winston Cup victory, but it's also the place where he admitted on Saturday that his chances of winning a championship this year are diminishing greatly. But one other thing happened on the track Saturday. He finished second in the Bush race, and as his wife Kim reminded me, hey, we we have 15 Winston Cup trophies at home. My husband knows how to win. He just needs his luck to turn. And perhaps today it will. Let's go trackside for today's opening ceremonies. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks for this wonderful day and all the blessings of this life. We ask for your blessing, protection, and guidance for the drivers and their teams this day that all may done to your glory. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. 
And now please welcome for Beaumont, Texas, recording artist Clay Walker in the singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming who's brought stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight oh the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home words in NASCAR. Please welcome racing legend A.J. Boyd. Gentlemen, start your engines. Never mind bronc busting, this has proven in its short history to be one car busting racetrack. We're set to go racing in Texas where the leader is America's most wanted and he'll have no shortage of cars in hot pursuit. I can listen. I can cook. Good. I can coach. Kids with something to do are less likely to do drugs. I can drive. I can paint. I can dance. A little of your time can make a lifetime of difference. I can read. I can help. You can help. Call toll-free 1-877-KIDS-313 to find out about community drug prevention programs. I can keep a kid off drugs. Last Wednesday, over 22 million viewers fell in for the most intense reality series ever. Let's go! Boot Camp, Fox style. Men don't use these anymore! No, sir! Critics say Boot is a hoot. Save the drama for your mama and push. Mom. It's a scream. Go, yes, go! Go, yes, go! Next when he gets in your face and spits all over you. I can't stand him. I don't even think his mother loves him. Discover why America can't stop talking about Boot Camp at 9, 8 Central, Fox Wednesday. Budweiser, official beer of NASCAR, is proud sponsor of the Bud Pole Award, given to the fastest qualifier at each Winston Cup race. Today's Bud Pole winner, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Since 1979, Anheuser-Busch has awarded more than $7 million as title sponsor of the Pole Award program. That said, let's have a look at the rest of today's Home Depot starting grid. It's Earnhardt Jr. on pole, and Bobby Labonte, who finished third in three of the four Texas races, right alongside on the front row. Dale Jarrett, he'll be starting third at the Darlington Winter two second place results here. And uh, Bobby Hamilton will be starting fourth there, and he's, man, he's off to a great start this year in that 55 car. Steve Park and Ricky Rudd there at the third row. 
And there's Mark Martin, who is the 1998 winner of this race. And little brother, right there, ready to rock and roll. Jeff Gordon, best finish here is 25th, and Casey Atwood, the best start of the season for this rookie in the fastest dodge. Elliott Saddle, last week's winner, and Andy Houston has five truck series starts here. There's O'Kenny Schrader. Uh, that M&M's car is getting stronger every week. Got a new crew chief. He's looking good. Tied with line and rookie Kurt Busch, also out of the truck series. Johnny Benson starting 17th. Fastest in happy hour. Everybody says, watch this race car. Mike Skinner, for a good run yesterday in the Bush race. And the man that started the race, A.J. Foyt, his driver, Ron Hornaday, starting in 20th spot. Jimmy Spencer with Buckshot Jones in the 12th row. Stacy Compton, whose car owner passed up front row final four tickets to be here. Ward Burton crashed in happy hour. They did repair this car, but lost a lot of valuable track time. Joe Nemechek with Jason Leffler back in row 15. And then the 97 winner, Jeff Burton. Jeff Burton got his first NASCAR victory here on the Winston Cup Tour in 97. Kevin Harvick, yesterday's winner in the Bush race. He'll be tough. Jerry Nadeau, the Atlanta winner with Kenny Wallace. And then look at the drivers who had to take provisionals. <laughs> yeah, we could talk about the rest of these guys the rest of the day. All the big stars at the back, but uh, they won't be there long. You got three Winston Cup champions back there in provisional land. Texas Terry Labonte starting 42nd. Won this race two years ago. Struggled in happy hours. Still hunting what that car is looking for. And Dave Blaney, who ran great at Atlanta. I expect to see him get up there and run for the lead before the day's over with. Only two cars had to go home. Rick Mast in the Hal Hicks Chevy. And sadly, Kyle Petty, whose son Adam made his only Winston Cup start in a number 45 Petty car here last year. A big thumbs up from the safety crews. They all want to get through those first two laps okay. Boy, I tell you, that, that could be a busy bunch of guys right there. They'll go 334 laps to complete the 500-mile distance. Posted awards of $5 million. Pit window 65 to 70 laps. That's a full fuel stop, and these cars will be able to go that on the tires Goodyear has brought here. And the winner's going to take home over $400,000 today. So this is a big purse and a big race in the Big D, Dallas. There they headed down into turn one there. Cars are just entering into turn one. Little bump right down here in the middle of this corner. Some of the drivers have complained about. You can see where they've been working on the racetrack, trying to grind it out and make it smoother. They exit off a of turn two up onto the back straightaway. A little tight right here as they come off of that corner. Always got to keep it off the wall right there. Here they come up out of that corner. See how they kind of elevate up out of the corner? That's why we always talk about up onto the back straightaway. Drivers are working their tires, getting the tires warmed up, getting the debris knocked off of them, getting ready to go. Down that back stretch, they'll turn about 200 less RPMs than they will on the front stretch because it's shorter. Gear selection is very, very critical. Folks, it's a 500-mile race, so uh, we're going to have to really watch these engines because they're going to work hard today. Everybody's heating up the tires. That's all they're doing. They're putting the heat in the tires. They're low air. Their uh, crew chiefs tell them to put some heat in those tires. Get it, Mikey. Look at that shot, huh? I bet he doesn't even know we're in there with him. Oh, sure he does. <laughs> I've never seen stickers on the underside of that steering wheel well, before. Well, the sponsor knows we're in there with him. I don't know if Mikey knows it or not. Steering column cam. And here we come off turn four. Again, real tight right here. Got to watch that car as it comes out of that corner. It carries a lot of speed and uh, hard to keep it off the fence right there. First career winners here at Texas, we mentioned Jeff Burton in 97. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in 2000 scored their first ever Winston Cup wins here bracketing Mark Martin and Terry Labonte. And we saw a bunch of drivers yesterday get in trouble over here in this area, coming through this little trial right here, get pushed out in the grass. And buddy, when you do, away you go. And here they come again down toward turn one. But this trial area right through here, very tight. 147,000 seats, they're all full. The turn two condominiums are full. The Speedway Club in turn one is full. The infield is packed. There's a look at the Speedway Club. Rows of seats down through there and a big ballroom up on top. Neat place. And a health club. I'll tell you what else is full. The highways are full. People still trying to get in here. There is a dirt track out here off the back straightaway where they run World of Outlaws and Late Models. There's a Legends track right here. 
and the mile and a half oval and 15,000 camper spaces and more parking spaces than Disney World. And even in the Speedway Club up there in the top, they have professional boxing matches periodically. Anybody we know, like any NASCAR? <laughs> I'm sure nobody in particular. <laughs> nobody in particular. They have done that in the past. Bruton and Humpy put a pair of gloves on them, say, here, y'all square, y'all go at it in the ring. We're going to ride along with the pole sitter, Dale Earnhardt Jr. There's the butt cam on board. His number eight Chevrolet. This is the car that he won here a year ago. They only run this car at Texas and Charlotte. There's our MBNA cam on board Bobby Labonte from the outside pole trying to get his season turned around here. Well, that's a good way to do it. Looking out the front window there and uh, nothing in front of you. UPS cam on board Dale Jarrett. The Pfizer Viagra cam inside Mark Martin's car. Ahead of him, you see the pace car about to come in. There's Johnny Benson. The Valvoline Cam and his Pontiac. And here we go. All right, DW, pull in belts okay. tight. 500 miles of racing in the mid 180s to 190 miles per hour. And everybody's got to give each other a break here now, getting down into turn one, because it's pretty slippery up on that outside. You'll see most everybody worked out a little tough before the race started to get down in front of the guy that they started beside. Got through that end, all right. First lap, clean and green. Earnhardt Jr. leads it. And it's a beautiful thing. We made it all the way around on the first lap. No contact. Yesterday's race was a car buster for the Bush Series. About 12 cars went home in the basket. There's Jeff Gordon working to the inside. He's got Michael Waltrip all over him. And these cars haven't been back on the racetrack since yesterday morning. They didn't get to run an afternoon practice here, so some of these guys are searching for setup. We'll stand silent for lap three, honoring the memory of Taylor. and the front four have broken away a bit. How appropriate he should lead lap three here at Texas where he got his first win. Yeah, it is. And, uh, the man, he jumped. He was ready to go, too, buddy. When they dropped that green flag, he took off. Talk about taking off. How about Jeff Gordon in that 24 car? Everybody said good and happy hour. Made those long runs. Got that car where he wants him. If things will stay his way. Trouble front straight away. Michael Waltrip in the wall. Kurt Busch to the infield. And Michael comes across traffic. Ron Hornaday punts Jimmy Spencer in the aftermath. A lot of cars stacking up behind that wreck got in trouble, really, on about a two-car wreck. Well, we saw this all day yesterday. I mean, the grills in most of the cars yesterday were knocked out because of checking up and couldn't get stopped. You're going so fast. Things happen here. You just can't get slowed down quick enough. A little damage to the right front corner of rookie Kurt Busch. And then Ron Hornaday. Got into the back of Jimmy Spencer as Spencer threaded his way through. Bush actually ended up on pit lane over there, right, right in the Bill Elliott's pit. Boy, even the wrecks are bigger here in Texas. Well, they have worn this infield out right through here, this trial. Here comes Michael. Well, not too good, Mikey. Got work to do, bud. Darrell, let's see what happened here. Ooh. Ooh, he may have gotten a little help from that uh, McDonald's car. Nowhere for Kirk Bush in the 97 car, right in front of Mike Skinner in the 31 car. I mean, he dodged two bullets there. There's Hor Oh, Spencer came across the grass. That's why Hornaday got into him. And yeah, Buckshot, Buckshot, Buckshot Jones, Jones. 44, nowhere for him to go all the way up the top of the racetrack. These guys back in here. Look are at Kirk Bush over here, way all the way in the pits. Actually, that's Casey Atwood's pit over there. From here Michael Walter. The Napa oh, 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 it gets loose on him. It gets loose on him. I'm not sure if that 96 car didn't probably get into the back of him. Normally when you wreck here at Texas, as you said, it is a big wreck. And he has rolled to a halt behind the pit wall. 
a little bit of collateral debris out on the straightaway. So we're at caution at five laps here in Texas. Michael Waltrip pounding the wall and six cars piling up behind him. This is NASCAR on Fox. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Rigid. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our planer with the power and performance to produce superior finishes on stock up to 13 inches wide. Rigid. Buy them at the Home Depot. First in home improvement. Who makes the best minivan? Obviously, the press has already decided. Dodge Grand Caravan, the best minivan ever. We invite you to see, compare, and drive Caravan, now with low 0.9 financing. Tempting, flirtatious, seductive, and that's just the fender. It's that time of year at Pep Boys where you can save over $90 on these great car care products. Fall in love with your car again at Pep Boys. Hey, check it out. A totally twisted way to eat pizza. Yeah, a new Twisted Crust pizza from Pizza Hut. It's breadsticks. No, it's pizza. It's both. Look, go directly to the Twisted Crust and tear off a breadstick. Dude, what planet are you from? You eat your pizza first and you save your breadsticks till the end. No, it's breadsticks first and the free marinara or ranch dipping sauce then pizza. You're twisted. Pizza first. The new Twisted Crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Breadsticks and pizza together at last. I got one word for you. Breadsticks. That's two words, Brainiac. Another one of the best pizzas under one roof. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot on Fox, is brought to you by the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. By Labor Ready, dependable, temporary labor guaranteed. By Kawasaki, let the good times roll. And by Ultimate TV from Microsoft. Welcome back to the Harris 500, where Michael Waltrip has drawn a card to his 15 and busted hard into the front straightaway wall. And we've looked at it a lot of different angles here, and the best shot we got, I mean, it appears that the 96 could have gotten into the back of him, but I'm not sure. And that 97 car, Kurt Busch did a what? Look at that. Twice. There's a look at Michael Walter grinds off speed along that front straightaway wall. Another angle. Inconclusive as to the cause, but... But the effect is pretty obvious. Jeannie? Well, Michael, first and foremost, I'll ask you on behalf of your brother. You're feeling okay? Yeah, I feel fine. Uh, just lost it, I guess. Uh, uh, the thing had been real tight, and I, I had the wheel cut. I think the 96 got up on the back of me, and it just got away from me. Just unfortunate. Our Napa Chevrolet was not the way we needed it in happy hour yesterday, so we had to make a best bunch of guesses for this morning, and uh, I just messed up. Yeah, well, that didn't pay off, but uh, how's it looking to get back out there? It's very early. Yeah, we're going to try to get back out. Uh, guys, are, we're going to work real hard on it and just ride around so everybody can see our Napa Chevrolet, Klauser Furniture, car. I got to do a commercial. Everything else is messed up. All right, we got your promo in. Take care. Guys? Michael came in here 12th in the Winston Cup point standings. Won't leave here in that position. No, but I love the honesty. He's not just my brother, but all these drivers. When they say, hey, I just messed up. You know, I lost the thing. Uh, we made some changes, and the car wasn't too good, and I spun out. Even though they did some guessing, they used a lot of information from Steve Park's car and Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car. Multiple pit stops for Jimmy Spencer and Buckshot Jones, who were damaged in that slide, and Tony Stewart, who took a provisional start, also making a pit stop under this caution flag. This CD RXDI is running great. How about a splash of gas and I'm out of here. Have you got any kings? Go fish. Hey, are you still mad because we didn't let you drive? Come on, Jimmy, it's my turn to drive. Oh, oh, I'm on, seeing you drive. Slide on the back, slide on the back. It's my turn to drive. That's where you belong, on the back. I want to drive the boat. You ready, guys? This could be the ride of your life. 
We gotta get past the myths and the excuses. Erectile difficulty is a common problem. Effective treatment is available. Talk to your doctor. You might be surprised how easily you can get through it. Zesty! Zesty! Zesty times two. The only thing zestier than eating a crunchy Taco Bell taco is eating two crunchy Taco Bell tacos. Zesty party of two. A tale of two zesties. Uno, dos, zesty. There's nothing like doubling up on America's number one taco. And right now you can do it for just 99 cents. Two crunchy tacos for 99 cents. Get them at the bell. Hello, zesty. <laughs> Call winning. Hello. Zesty. Inside the non-stop action on race weekend. Get inside the news and highlights. Get inside the teams, fans, and games. Only at the official site of NASCAR. NASCAR.com. America Online keyword, NASCAR. Will Titus's parents get back together? That ship has sailed. It was captured by pirates, set on fire, and crashed on the rocks. Titus, 8.30, 30 Central, Fox Tuesday. Green flag for the restart to begin lap 11 here in Texas. Dale Earnhardt Jr. has led them off. Just complete a cleanup from the first caution flag for Michael Waltrip track. It just seems like there's always action early here. Uh, the track's a little slick up on the outside and just causes guys so much trouble. Everyone's still on the lead lap, so single file restart. Not single file for long. Here comes Mike Skinner on the inside of Schrader. Got Hutt Strickland right behind him in that 90 car. They've opened the door on the bottom there. Just can't get a hold of that upper groove. He takes the position there. Hutt Strickland, though, he's going to pull to the inside. He wants that position. And why is that car so much faster when a couple of shows before he has not been able to qualify? He's got Robert Yates engines in, in Hutt Strickland's car, the 90 car. They made the swap this week coming here to Texas. And happy birthday to his car owner, Junie Dunleavy, 78 years young today. And one of the nicest men in racing. I'm telling you, I've known him all my racing career. Look at Harvick down there on the inside. Kevin Harvick in the 29, trying the inside on Jason Leffler. Two rookies going at it. And Harvick's going to take it away from him off four here. This is the car that Kevin Harvick won Atlanta with just a few weeks ago. Kevin Hamlin told me this morning they did not get too far away from the setup they used at Atlanta on this race car. No, I always found that what worked at Atlanta, Charlotte even, works pretty darn good here, but particularly in the race. Bobby Labonte running in second place right where he started. Steve Burns. Mike, just before the caution, he radioed crew chief Jimmy Maycar and said that the water and oil temperatures were both 180 degrees, which is where they should be. But something to keep in mind, a lot of these crew chiefs, the crews, put duct tape across the front grill of these cars to help get more downforce. The bad news is that could make the engines run hot later on. But 180 degrees to me would be a little bit cool. Yeah. I, if it stays there, I'd be wanting to put me some tape on that front end, put some more downforce in that thing, and help the drag of that race car. By all means. We'd like to see the water running about 210 degrees, all about 230. 24th position where Rusty Wallace and Jeff Burton battles. Stacy Compton just in front of them. Well, Rusty told me he started 38th, and Inside. I talked to him last night. He said, oh, he said, I'm going to be good in the race. that I run fourth Inside. here last Inside. year. Clear. Clear. Car's Inside. as good as it was last year. Good job there. Now, Burton started 31st. He's come up about six spots. And right behind Burton, the 43 of John Andretti, who started this race 40th. Yeah, well, he had trouble, you know, qualifying. Uh, Jeff Gordon dropped some fluid, and he got in it on his qualifying lap. So uh, expect that car to go to the front pretty quickly. How about Dave Blaney in the 93 car? He did start dead last. Yeah. He's moving to the front, takes the position away from John Andretti. Got he, that car right on the bottom of the racetrack. He will be up there, I guarantee you, before the day is over with. Well, Blaney up to 26th on your scorecard. And bring in a racer, because <laughs> things change here in a hurry. Oh, they do. Watch those cars really leap off into that third turn. They just drive down in there with the nose up just a little bit. Now, the 20 of Tony Stewart made a pit stop just before we went back to green under this first caution flag. I don't believe he had any damage. I think he was making an adjustment because, again, these cars had not been on the racetrack since yesterday morning. 
But you know, Daryl, no matter how many laps you've run, if you're in that back five or six cars, the pit stop is kind of a free free lunch for you. Come on in there, get some gas in that thing, make adjustments. Oh, yeah, it's a great opportunity if your car's not right. Kevin Harvick up to 19th, passing Ken Schrader. He's just picking up where he left off yesterday. Man, he drove an awesome race yesterday to win that 300 uh, miler. Harvick has gained 14 positions since the green flag. You know, a lot of cars that were good in practice uh, on Friday didn't qualify that well. But uh, when we looked at the times from happy hour yesterday, those cars were right at the top of the list. So they had to start way back, but here they come in the race. John Andretti battling Stacy Compton. Compton's owner, Mark Mellings, a Michigan State grad, gave up final four front row tickets to be here to watch his car run. Well, maybe he knew what the results were going to be. And, and that <laughs> car made the pass right there on the second groove. These guys, if they'll keep doing that, we'll have two grooves of racing through the corners. Meanwhile, riding off into the sunset. Yeah. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Dale Earnhardt Jr. has opened up a second and a half on the second place car. Now Dale Jarrett and Steve Park. He has no intentions of racing anybody today. He's just going to run out there by himself. Oh, <laughs> Matt. Dale Earnhardt Jr. just came on the radio during that caution, Mike, and said his car is very good, but a little bit loose in the center of the corner. They're watching the clouds down here because it will change the car. Meanwhile, Steve Park, he could be on the move. Kevin Mannion, the car chief on that number one car, told me before the start they set it up a little bit loose because of the weather and hoping the cloud cover stays like it is. That car tested here the Goodyear tire. They were very pleased with the tire they brought back. Here is Johnny Benson in ninth place. Started in 17th. Again, that car was fast in happy hour yesterday, and it was fast on long runs, which is what's important. I well, like a car. I like a car fast on long runs, as long as they don't get too far away from me. So uh, it takes me too long to catch them. <laughs> they won't get too far away next weekend, Daryl. We go to Martinsville, Virginia. The half mile track shaped like a paper clip. Short trek, beat and bang at That's best. right. You'll be strapping that TV to the table next week, folks, because they'll be knocking her off. Two drag strips with a corner connecting both of them at each end. It's a John Force kind of racetrack. Looking back from Mark Martin, he's in 12th place. That's Bobby Hamilton behind. Jarrett for the lead. At the start finish line, Dale Jarrett takes it away from Earnhardt Jr. And man, I think something must have happened to Jr. because he just chased him down and passed him all in about the same lap. So Jr. might have gotten a little loose somewhere. Now, if he was a little loose running here right behind the 88 car, that takes some of the front down force off the front of that car, and it could neutral the car out. It won't be as loose following Dale Jarrett in the 88. No, when you get tucked up behind somebody, it'll tighten you up. No comments from Earnhardt to his crew as to any possible problem on the car and he's tracking Dale Jarrett pretty well. Jarrett's not getting away. Twenty three laps complete. Dale Jarrett's now led all five Winston Cup races here in Texas. You're watching NASCAR racing on Fox presented by Home Depot. You remember Jared from Subway? Turns out he's inspired a lot of people. He's still looking good to show you the way. His name is Jared, and he'll lead you to Subway. That's where it goes, along with the rest. For seven sandwiches, for six grams of fat or less. What an inspiration. Subway, eat fresh. The limited edition Napa NASCAR Heat PC game. You can get it absolutely free when you purchase $25 or more during the Napa Turn Up the Heat sale. Move fast. It's all over April 30th at participating Napa Auto Parts stores and Napa Auto Care Centers. In addition, save big on Napa Lawn and Garden Tractor Batteries, Turtle Wax Super Hard Shell Wax, and a lot more at your participating Napa Auto Parts store.
the other people on the road. It's better to be safe than sorry. If a thing is worth doing, it's worth doing well. Now get a thousand dollar cash allowance or low 0.9 financing on Dodge Stratus. Winston Cup Racing presented by the Home Depot on Fox is brought to you by Dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different. Welcome back to Texas. 27 laps complete. Schrader battling Skinner and Blaney who's come from the tail end of the field into the top 20. Blaney's car is a hot rod, baby. That thing is going. Moments ago, a trouble for the ninth place point man, Bobby Hamilton, the 55 car, uh, just dropping off yeah. the racetrack. There he is, almost stopped up in turn four. I mean, something really, I mean, something just happened to that car, like it shut off. He was trying to get the pit road right here, come in and change four tires, Matt Yoakum. Larry, a flat left rear tire for Bobby Hamilton Jr. The crew checking over now, you can see where the carcass has started to split away from the tire. As the crew guys are going to look it over, but that was a problem. That's why he darted down pit road. Up front, Dale Jarrett has a four-tenths of a second margin over Dale Earnhardt Jr. You know, every time, we have had a lot of tire problems here at the Texas in the past, and every time you come with a new tire, even though you've run it somewhere else, you always have a little doubt in your mind until you get a long run on them, get some green flag racing, and get them off and check them over. But chances are, with a flat left rear, that he just run over and cut something. More than say. likely. Blaney just keeps coming. Here he comes past Mike Skinner, and that is for 17th position. As I watch him do this, I can't help but think back to Atlanta, a track very similar to this about a month ago where he looked like he was going to do nothing but win that race until they had some lugs loose and the wheel fell off. But I tell you the other thing about it, the leaders are on the same straightaway with that whole pack of cars, so they are coming in a hurry. Whoa, dodgeball, Sterling Marlin, the 40 inside of John Andretti. That was really close. It looks like, Larry, that second groove. Whoa, oh, they contact. Whoa, man. And that's what happens right there. You almost run out of racetrack. It's like running in a funnel when you get there to that part of the front stretch. But it looks like they're starting to work the second groove a little bit, too. Not uh, Yesterday, we never saw that. Today, it looks like these guys can go side by side through the corners. And that's good news for everybody. Not because they want to, but because they have to? Oh, yeah. Well, you can't pass. I mean, if you're just going to follow a leader, you can't do any good. But here, you can start to make some outside passes and uh, move forward. Relevant speeds in our Fox tracks, 170 miles an hour coming off, off the corner. Off the corner at 175 miles an hour. Down the front stretch here, climbing 188, 190, 191, 191 miles an hour, tucked up behind somebody going off in a corner. And only felt about 155 miles an hour down there in the middle of turn one and two. This track gives you the sensation of a, of, of a brick tied on the end of a rope when you go through the corner. I mean, you just slingshot through these corners. And we only saw in the high 170s, close to 180, we talked about the backstretch being shorter going off into turn three. And the leaders are already lapping cars. So when you're up front, you can really, really make a lot of time on the back of the field. These guys back here are racing each other. He's got clean air in front of him, but he's going to run into some trouble down the back straightaway right now. Two cars pile up, one slides to the inside. And they do it, Robert Presley. Robert Presley in the 77 there, a lot of damage to the front end. Jerry Nadeau here in the 25 car sitting on the back stretch. Second caution of the day, and it comes on lap 34. Boy, that saved a bunch of guys because they were starting to get in trouble. Matter of fact, a bunch of them are getting the laps back. Here comes Bobby Hamilton trying to make it back. Come on, buddy, come on, buddy. He got it. Let's see what happens coming off turn two. What happened coming off of turn two is that yellow car got into that red car. Mm. Boy, Boy, Tony, Tony Stewart, Stewart just gets by. Just barely. Different angle. Let's see if we see contact here. Right up off that corner. You know, sometimes right there, you get that little bit of push. You have to back off that throttle. Guy behind you don't get off the throttle. Gets into the back of you. Now, let's show you what Tony Stewart saw. You want to be a Winston Cup driver? Try this. 
got into him a little bit, I believe. I don't think it did any serious damage, but I do believe he got in the back of 77. He did yeah. get a little bit of damage. Yeah, he got some damage right there. And that's not good here at Texas because you see the hood, it's buckled up. There's a gap underneath the hood. They'll have to get that at least taped down because that could hurt you bad here as far as downforce and drag. All the leaders are on pit road. Steve Burns. And Dale Jarrett's coming into the attention of his team. Mike Trower will do the front tires. Kevin Gilman the rear. Barry Muse is a jack man. Steve Allen is the gas man. They're not going to make any adjustments. The 24 also coming in. Four tires for Dale Jarrett. He slides to a stop. Right side tires going on. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Jeff Gordon pits out of the fifth position. The front tire carrier is Greg Curioni. He grew up in Sanborn, New York, watching Roger Treichler run. Let's go to the 88. They're doing the left sides already on the 88 car. Gordon's guys now jack up on the left side. 88's out, Rusty's out, 88's out. All, all kinds of guys are beating Gordon out. So the two car, I watched him. Rusty told me last night. He said, watch this, we're going to do two tires to get an early caution to get track position. Just what he did. Matt? Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr., the leader, has already left pit road. They did make an air pressure adjustment on the right front and left rear. He said the car was a little loose going into the corner, good in the center, and a little loose off. His biggest concern, he felt like he might have run over something that might have damaged the right front. They looked at it. Tony Urey Jr. said everything looked fine. Larry, how about that strategy by Rusty Wallace to take just left side tires? Well, if you want to find out, you need to do it early in the race. You don't want to do it late in the race when it bites you. Again, this tire is great that Goodyear brought here. We saw it Four stay tires. and stay as far as lap times yesterday. Not a bad time to try it, Steve Burns. Hey, guys, another thing to think about. Robin Pemberton has been Rusty's crew chief since December of 1994. Robin is not here. He has not been feeling well. He went to see a doctor and had some tests run. His brother Ryan said he's feeling better, but he's not here. So it's going to be uh, difficult making strategy decisions without their leader. Johnny Benson has the lead. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Rusty Wallace, Dale Jarrett, and Steve Park here in Texas. Get inside the live racing action with RaceCast. Any driver, every lap. Only at NASCAR.com. America Online keyword, NASCAR. Pocono. This is the track known for its awesome restarts, incredible high speeds, long straightaways with three demanding turns, and a fan favorite pit paddock pass that puts you near all the action. The stars of NASCAR invade Pocono Raceway twice this year. June 17th, it's the Pocono 500 with a post-race concert by Billy Ray Cyrus. And July 29th, it's the Pennsylvania 500 with a post-race concert by Travis Tritt. So call now, 1-800-RACEWAY. That's 1-800-RACEWAY. Operators standing by. Ah, infinite possibilities. Remember that feeling? Kind of like when you first got the internet. But lately, does it feel a bit constraining? Chances are, slow logons and disconnects are really, well, holding you back. Free yourself with the AT&T 7.7 offer and get unlimited internet access and long distance together. Only $7 a month gives you AT&T WorldNet service with the fastest logon times and better, more reliable connection and $0.07 cents a minute long distance all day, every day. Both for less than half of what you're probably paying right now. So call 1-800-223-9000 for $0.07 cents a minute long distance and unlimited AT&T WorldNet service for just $7 a month. The AT&T 7-7 offer. The future is what you make of it. Get a Windstar for just $2.95 a month for 36 months with 2804 do it signing. Visit your Tri-State Quality Ford store today. Racing is brought to you locally by Ford. Welcome back to Texas Motor Speedway. After his win in yesterday's Bush race, Kevin Harvick has a 115-point lead in the NASCAR Bush Series after seven events. 
And here's a look at the current Craftsman Truck Series standings brought to you by Sears. Scott Riggs, after three races, just 12 points ahead of Joe Rutman and Ted Musgrave, Ricky Hendrick, and Jack Sprague all tied for third. Well, Larry, we had some, I didn't have time to ask you what to do, so you <laughs> threw two tires on me. Uh, hope I'm all right. Well, Johnny Benson in the 10 car, James Entz, his crew chief, decided to take two tires leading the race. Bobby Hamilton on the inside in the 55 got one of his two laps back. Rusty Wallace came in 19th, Mike. Two tires out in third place. How about it, Jeff Hammond? Good call, two tires? I think so. And if you think about yesterday, Larry, you made that same call along with Jimmy Johnson's uh, crew chief, uh, Rambo, and said, hey, those tires will go the distance. These guys only got 34 laps on them. Yesterday, guys had, what, 70 laps on the left side when it was all said and done. So I think it was a good call on these guys' part. Right now, it's going to cost him the lead. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in eight car. He gets the lead back from Johnny Benson. He puts Bobby Hamilton back a lap down here and takes the lead. But what I liked about Jr. was he got four tires and still came out in the front or up in near the front. Trouble on Brett Bodine slowing in the front straightaway, driving his own Ford, coasting up into turn number one see any fluid from behind the car. It has the appearance of maybe a tire down. We talked about the adjustments on Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s car on that pit stop, a little bit loose. They put a little bit of air in the left rear, a little bit of air in the right front. That increases the spring rate on those two corners, tightens that race car up, but you've got to be so careful here and not tighten your car up too much because more rubber goes down, the tighter the racetrack will get. The car will want to turn less and less. Well, when it comes to fresh tires here, it looks like four of a kind beat a pair. <laughs> they do. Earnhardt Jr. back out in front, right where he started. He's led 23 of the 41 laps. Brett Bodine has made it to pit road as we watch Kevin Harvick close up on last week's winner, Elliott Sadler. This is a battle for 12. Now there's the interval from Harvick to the leader. Increasing a little bit as he goes into the corner and mid corner because the leader's on the straightaway well, right now. They're coming, they're about the middle of the back straightaway and Junior's down here in the middle of three and four. So uh, kind of gives you an idea of what a couple of seconds look like. And there's the distance around the racetrack to our leader. And there's Junior at the line now. Man, these cars get so close together coming through that trial. It's so, it's, it's fast through there. You don't realize how fast you're going. Folks, let's give you a chance to hear what 750 horsepower times 43 sound like. Just grab that volume control and give it a good crank up. on board Bobby Labonte looking back at Jeff Gordon and those cars going by those cameras that's a 3400 pound rocket that just went by there and there's the battle we're watching it's for seventh place the last car on the outside Bobby Hamilton going down the front stretch Jeff Gordon looking to the inside off into turn one lose a little ground Bobby drove it off in that corner a little deeper than Jeff Gordon right here Jeff picks a little bit of ground up probably from Bobby driving it so deep in the corner. Dale Jarrett going after Rusty Wallace. Jarrett also had four fresh tires. And Ricky Rudd, the 28 car, he's going to take the position from Steve Park in the one and going after Rusty Wallace right now. Well, Rusty's two tires. He'll probably think twice about doing that again, especially if we go green for a while. But again, you did, if you, if you was even thinking about it, you want to do it early in the race. You don't want it to bite you late in the race. Bonnie continues to hold off Gordon, and now his green machine closes in on the rear deck lid of Wallace. Inside. In, inside. We've by quarters. And 
sell your call. Rusty just cannot keep that car right now. Bobby Labonte goes by him, gonna bring Jeff Gordon with a 24 car by him. For more on Rusty, here is Matt. The 18, Rusty Wallace says, loses a spot to the 18 car of Bobby Labonte. Bobby Labonte on that last round of pit stops, Mike. They took one round of wedge out. He's complaining his car was a little bit tight. Jimmy Maker, the crew chief, wanted to try wedge now to see if it might help for later, planning for the later stages of this race. But Bobby's biggest problem has been trying to get a good feel on this new tire. They made 12 changes on this race car before the race, trying to get this car dialed in. Second place, Dale Jarrett streaks past Johnny Benson. I talked to Bobby and uh, Jimmy Maycard yesterday afternoon, and they are still experimenting almost every race, trying to find the combination for this new tire that Goodyear has brought out this year. They're still not real happy with their race cars. So first and second, back about where we were when the caution flag came out, with Earnhardt Jr. leading Jarrett. Dale has led 32 laps, and Dale has led 15. I'm a little confused. Jarrett's led 15. Oh, oh, okay. Junior's led. That's not the first time, by the way. I've been a little confused. <laughs> now, here's the interval. Jarrett just about 2.7 back. Pretty He's much old. holding. Loses a little bit down here as he heads into turn one. 2.8 seconds. Off of turn two. Maintaining right there, 2.8 seconds. So these two guys, and if you look at the, if you look at our lap times, they're running pretty equal lap times right now. Junior off the corner, coming back to the stripe, and here's Jarrett coming up off turn four. Speed build. Comes off the corner in the mid 170s, down the front stretch. Seventy four hundred RPMs down in the middle of turn one and two, off turn two, wide open throttle, building RPMs, miles per hour, mid one eighties, eighty six hundred, almost eighty seven hundred. One hundred and ninety two mile an hour into that corner. And only one hundred and sixty five off the gas in the middle of the corner. Cars are incredibly fast. Dick Bergeron. Jeff, Jeff Gordon currently riding in seventh position has just keyed his radio and told his crew there is smoke inside his race car. Crew chief Bradley Loomis asked what the gauges said. Gordon said the gauges are fine, but they are clearly concerned. You don't want smoke inside that thing. It always means something's wrong. He says it smells like burning rubber. Well, it, it could be a number of things. It could be uh, the, they sometimes get the transmission filled up a little too much and it'll blow a little grease out. It could be a little oil out of the oil tank and it could be rubber. Sometimes you get a piece of rubber up on the headers, up inside the header pipes, and it'll smoke for a little while until it burns itself out. So the gauges are okay. I wouldn't worry right now. Doesn't necessarily mean it's his tires. It could be the rubber off somebody else's tire. They got up on the header. Bobby Labonte tracking fifth place. Ricky Rudd as we've now... 54 laps. You're watching Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by Home Depot. We don't know which one you'll want, what color you'll want, or even what accessories you'll want. But we do know that now is the time to buy a new Kawasaki Vulcan Cruiser. Right now, during our Kawasaki Good Times giveaway, we'll give you $500 in accessories or zero down on a low APR when you pick up any new Vulcan 1500 Classic, Drifter, Nomad, or 800 Classic. And you should hurry in, because the only other thing we know is, a deal this good isn't going to last forever. Ever thought about what could happen in short days? You could fall in love. You could, with appliances that are eager to please and know their way around the kitchen. We'll fix you up at the Sears 72-hour sale. It's your chance to get 0% financing through August 2001 on all appliances over $399 and live, well, happily ever after. And hurry, with this much going for them, they won't be available forever. The 72-hour sale at Sears. The good life at a great price, guaranteed. On April 11th, the world will never be the same. Once you've seen it through the eyes. I can see down your shirt. Of Joe Dirt. Hey, Freak Boy, 1976 called. It wants its hairstyle back. What? Go on an adventure no! with Joe Dirt. No! Joe Dirt. Boy's got something to say to me. Why don't you talk into the microphone? I got a backup mic right here. PG-13 ah! opens everywhere April 11th.
Beer is like a natural food product. The fresher it is, the better it tastes. That's why Budweiser has 12 local breweries right here in the United States. So you know, our beer will always be fresh. This Bud's for you. And you, and you, and you. This Bud's for you. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot on Fox, is brought to you by Budweiser, with the crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. This Bud's for you. And oblivious to all the traffic, giving us these views of Dale Earnhardt's Bud Chevy is the Budweiser.com airship. Thousand feet above Texas Motor Speedway. C can I have a ride to the airport, please? <laughs> <laughs> it looks like that uh, Junior's car gets a little loose on the long run, and uh, Jarrett's able to chase him down, and uh, he's closing the gap up on him pretty good. I believe Junior's car gets a little bit loose after a while, don't you, Larry? Yeah, it, I believe the longer we run, it starts to go away just a little bit. There's the gap, first to second. The back in third is Steve Park. In fourth, Johnny Benson. In fifth, Ricky Rudd. Sixth is Jeff Gordon. In seventh, Bobby Labonte. Eighth, Todd Bodine. Ninth, Andy Houston. Then Elliot Sadler. Rusty Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Mark Martin, Mike Skinner, and Matt Kenseth, the top 15. Tony Stewart in the 20 car was, was going forward before that last cost. Remember, he got in the back of Robert Presley. They come in and did tape the nose up. Right now, he's running in 26th position, but damage to the nose can definitely hurt you. In a battle there with Stacey Compton and Kenny Schrader. We've been hearing reports of the 24 cars maybe leaking some fluid, but I'm um, looking at the car and I don't see anything on the back of it. But they did have a problem with that car in qualifying on Friday, blowing oil out of it. So there may be something going on there that we just haven't caught up with yet. Let's when he was what qualifying happened. on Friday, he went off in the third turn. And if you notice here, coming out of the back of the car, all of a sudden you see all that fluid. That was a combination of oil and water but mostly oil, and I think they were blowing that out of the oil tank. So there might be something going on with that car here again today. Keep our eye on it. This is his There's worst. No, normally you see on the back of the car, if it's losing anything, you'll see it up on the back of that car right there, and I don't see any fluid there right now. And the car seems to be running all right. He just took the position away from Ricky Rudd in the 28 car and moves into fifth position. Here's a battle for the lead. Dale Jarrett wants it at the start-finish line, and he leads lap 64. That's about how many laps it took him to chase Junior down in the opening laps of the race. So uh, I believe Junior's car slows down a little bit after they run a while. That's kind of like a good example of a car good on the short run and a car good on the long run. Junior jumps out there to a huge lead, and then Jarrett chases him down. These 180-mile-an-hour laps are a little different than what we'll see next weekend on Fox. Wins the Cup qualifying Friday on Fox Sports Net at the half-mile Martinsville, Virginia Speedway. One of the oldest tracks of NASCAR. And then on Saturday, final practice on FX at noon Eastern time. Sunday, NASCAR this morning on the net, our Winston Cup race. 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Coverage begins on Fox and then NASCAR Victory Lane on the net. I love the short tracks, man. It's all about finesse. 65 laps complete here at Texas Motor Speedway. Well, folks, well, everything, folks will everything will be decided today. today. If you want to win in today's world, you can't afford to go it alone. It takes teamwork and training to win. Just like the winning team that builds quality cars and trucks on the assembly line. UAW GM. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. So, uh, what do you say? Make a lot of downforce? Yeah. Looks like it'd be a lot of drag. Tons. What kind of RPM? Seven. Uh, five. I think it's seven. Sign here? Sorry, I only have a minute. In so many ways, in so many places, 
It keeps a million disasters a day from happening. It's like having a life insurance policy you never knew you had. Gotta go. It's plastics. There's my good girl. <laughs> plastics make it possible. Get inside the official gear of NASCAR. Apparel, collectibles, and more. Only at NASCAR.com. America Online keyword, NASCAR. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot on Fox, is brought to you by the new Twisted Crust Pizza from Pizza Hut. Red sticks and pizza together at last. By the American Plastics Council. Plastics make it possible. By Viagra. Ask your doctor if Viagra is right for you. And by John Deere. Nothing runs like a deer. 70 laps complete in the Harris 500. Just north of Fort Worth, Texas, Mike Joy with Darrell Waltrip and Larry McReynolds. I believe these cars need speedometers in them. Because if these guys knew how fast they were going in miles per hour, they would quit running into each other the way they've been doing out there this afternoon. Dale Jarrett has opened up a one-second lead now on Dale Earnhardt Jr. His crew chief, they've been building new cars left and right. But this is the car that was brand new at Atlanta, and he actually won with it Darlington two weeks ago. They like this race car. Darrell, here's your speedometer right here. Dale can't see it. Yeah, he, we I, can. I'm telling you, they need big old speedometer right on the dashboard. They'd be a little more careful with each other. All you, all you got is a crew chief telling you how many seconds it's taking you to get around here, and a driver is not computing that to miles per hour, I can tell you. Look at that, 192 miles an hour. Passing somebody <laughs> into the corner. <laughs> into the corner. Let's update the second place car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Here's Matt. What a difference a year makes, Mike. Last year here in Texas, Dale Earnhardt Jr. was complaining his car was tight most of the day. They worked on that condition and still won the race. Here today, his car loose. And as the run progresses, it gets progressively looser. That's why Dale Jarrett has gone around him. Dale Jarrett's car a little better on the longer runs. They're going to work on that on the next pit stop, as they've done on the previous stop, to Steve Burns. Back with Paul Andrews, crew chief on the number one car. Paul, tell us about the adjustments you made to Steve Park's car on that last stop. Yeah, we wanted to be a little bit safe when we started the race. We tightened it up a little bit this morning. We basically went back to where we were at the end of practice yesterday. Uh, just starting off a little conservative. We took a little wedge out, raised the track bar off a little bit. Probably make the field of air pressure adjustments as we go. We're okay right now. Next call. Park working uh, lap cars, but he's kind of in a zone of his own. He's a second behind Earnhardt Jr., and he's four seconds ahead of Jeff Gordon, the fourth place car. But his car looks really good, and it's, again, it's really good on these longer runs, and uh, he's closing up on Jr. pretty good. Now there's Gordon in fourth, then Benson, number 10 in fifth, 28, Ricky Rudd, Todd Bodine with that light blue hood, new colors for Todd, and then Andy Houston. Andy Houston started his race 12th, just took the eighth position away a couple laps ago from Bobby Labonte. This is Andy's first start here at Texas in a Winston Cup car, and the season they've had, they've missed three races. He's not finished better than 21st, but he knows the way around this racetrack. In five truck races, he led a total of 188 laps and finished second in 99. Houston, the leading rookie in today's race. Just in front of our Winston Cup champ, outside pole sitter today, Bobby Labonte. And not too far behind this crowd is uh, Rusty Wallace. You know, he took two tires on that pit stop, Larry, and he is, he came in in 19th, and before he uh, gets in the pit again, he's going to be back in 19th. Larry, why did that work well for Johnny Benson, who's fifth, and not work so well for Rusty Wallace? Well, I I'm going to speculate a little Clear bit. If you've got a Clear tight race car, if your race car is not turning, we saw it yesterday in the Bush race, a lot of times two right side tires will help that car turn. If your car is neutral or loose, two right side tires with old left side tires will actually make that car looser. So that's may very well but what's going on i'm a little surprised that rusty though daryl rusty is normally not a a two-tire change in race car no but i think what his deal was he thought his car was really really good and he thought if he could get up front early on get a caution again right away then he'd be right where he wanted to be but what happened here is we had a caution he got tired took the two tires and we hadn't had a caution since it's going to bite him when it's over with so wallace has dropped from second on the restart back to 11. not a bad plan i mean it's a great strategy but it's got to work out everything's got to work out for you kind of like paul harvey what's the rest of the story 
We want to ri wish Rusty Wallace's crew chief, Robin Pemberton, uh, a get well. He's at home, went and saw the doctor earlier this week. Doctor said, you know, you need to slow down just a little bit and take a little of a break. He decided to take a break here from Texas, so we wish him well. Look forward to seeing him in Martinsville. And he's out, he's out getting him a new TV right now because he would not have taken two tires. <laughs> <laughs> and he just threw something through it when they did that. Ricky Rudd and Todd Bodine battling. It's a good run here for Todd. Sixth place is at stake here. Working on that high groove, DW, off turn four right here. Starting to come in for these guys. Boy, if you can get up off of that corner, if you can get up a little higher, you can get such a run down the straightaway here because you get such a better angle into the tri-oval. Yeah, that outside, you see that car yesterday, they couldn't do that. That car's up on the outside. A good, yeah, here he comes off turn two there. Got a good run. And Ricky Rudd saw that. He saw him. The spotter was letting him know, so why not go on and give him the position? He was faster. Just remember, this is a 500-mile race. We're going to be here for a while. Getting past right now is not going to make any difference. This is off turn four, 177 miles an hour going into turn one, 193, 94 miles an hour for these guys off in the corner racing each other. And we're only 120 miles out of 500. That's right. Got a long way to go. I wouldn't be too concerned track. about anything except staying on the lead lap right now. Now, Jeff Gordon has climbed to fourth place. There was reports earlier about a possible leak from his car. Dick Bergman? Well, we've been listening to Jeff Gordon's radio ever since he first called in and said he smelled smoke, and then we got that possible leak report. But Gordon has said nothing more about smoke in the car. And that's not unusual. Sometimes these things will pick up some rubber on a brake caliper or some sort of a duct or something, and it'll heat up, cause a little smoke inside the car, make the thing smell terrible for a little while. But all Gordon has said since that first report is that the car is getting a little bit tight. Well, if this is tight, running as well as he's running, wait till the next pit stop. This thing ought to be a rocket, Mike. He has 5.1 seconds off the lead and three and a half seconds behind third place Steve Park. And there's his interval to the leader, so he is gaining ground on Dale Jarrett. All clear. John Andretti, uh, well, I don't know, he's really slowed down a lot since the start of the race. What his problem is. Worked his way up from 40th position up toward the top 20, but after the round of pit stops, he found himself in the back, and now it's gone one down. That surprised me because I thought that car would be really good here. That's his teammate, Buckshot Jones, in the 44 car. Remember, he was involved in he's that got first wreck on the front stretch. All that damage on the left front. All he's trying to do right now is just finish this thing. Really hurts the downforce on these cars. Well, that's the thing you know about this. Uh, uh, the attrition will be very high here normally from a number of the things, accidents and blown motors. So you want to get back out there and run all the laps you can. One of the top rookies, Casey Atwood, and he's about to surrender a lap to the leader. Qualified 10th in that dot, but here he goes a lap down on lap 84. He's running in the 28th position. And we just see it over and over again. These guys made a pit stop, made changes, and they're going backwards. Jeff Hammond. Yeah, another rookie we were watching earlier on in the day, Kirk Bush, who was involved in that first accident. You'll notice all of a sudden, went way to the back, came all the way back up now at the 17th, challenging Kevin LaPace for position. I think he's got a real strong ride here today. Car looks good, Jeff. He just come off turn two and drove under Kevin LaPace down into turn three. Remember how good Bush was at his home track of Las Vegas, and this track is very similar. Raced the truck here some, got some laps around this joint, so he knows what he's doing. Dale Jarrett owns a 1.4 second lead on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Steve Park is another second back in third. You're watching NASCAR Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by the Home Depot. track handle. Its wheels are set wide for better control and grip in the curves. Wider is better.
Now, during the Pontiac's 75th anniversary, lease a new Wide Track Grand Prix for as low as $277 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. If you've got a big job, Labor Ready is the nation's leader in temporary labor and the first to offer a 100% satisfaction guarantee. If you aren't completely satisfied with the work, call us within two hours and we'll take care of it, no questions. Just call 1-800-24-LABOR. You can find good help these days. Labor Ready. Dependable temporary labor. For nearly half a century, one event in NASCAR has separated champions from all the rest. NASCAR's most challenging event, the Coca-Cola 600. A limited number of excellent seats are still available. So call today and be a part of an American classic. This May, make Charlotte your ultimate race vacation destination. Lead into the big race with a week-long festival. Tour all the NASCAR race shops and enjoy other exciting events at Lowe's Motor Speedway. We can even help you find a hotel room. Call 1-800-455-FANS today. Thursday Night Baseball on Fox Family. It all begins Thursday when the Red Sox visit the Orioles at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific. Welcome back to Texas. Dale Jarrett with a 1.9 second lead. Kevin LePage has made a pit stop. So has Casey Atwood. Uh, Andy Houston has been in. And now the number 90 for Hut Strickland. A little early for green flag pit stops, Larry? I, I think it's about 9 or 10 laps early. I've been calculating. They'd all been on lap 34. You can run about 65, 66 laps that we showed at the beginning of the show, so I'm figuring they'll be in a brown lap 99 and 100. But we also heard that Andy Houston's car was tight. If your car's tight, you're abusing that right front tire. He may have felt a little something. You don't want to take a chance here at Texas. Get to pit road, get four tires this early in the race. Yeah, plus a tight car will burn a little more fuel because you got it bound up all the time. And here comes Gordon down. Gordon's coming on pit road now. Jimmy Spencer in, and here's Jeff Gordon coming on to pit road. This has been his worst racetrack. Never finished better than 25th here, and that was with a car that was damaged. A lot of DNFs at Texas. Dick Bergman. Yeah, and the average finish is 32.2. This is definitely his worst track, one of only three active tracks he has one on so far. The plan right here, four tires. They're going to take about a pound of air out of the left front, make a wedge adjustment in this car. He's a little bit tight just before he gets to the apex of the corner, and that's what they're going to try to fix. No more conversation about any overheating of smoke or any of that kind of stuff going on in the car. So far, it's a perfectly normal, reasonable pit stop. Slow on the left rear, and he's gone. This deep burns. Steve Park comes in, slides to a stop. Kelly Kellis and Mike Atwell are the tire changers. Walter Smith is a jack man. Mike Bonick, the gas man. Billy Sutman and Chad Walker are the tire carriers. No chassis adjustment to the number one car of Steve Park. Left side tires going on. Jack is down, and Steve Park is away. Two pits, cars also in. Two pits behind James Ince's crew servicing Johnny Benson. New one race paint job for Benson. Done and away. Stacy Compton's in. John Andretti. Uh, Jeff Burton is in, and there's Dave Blaney getting service. Getting mighty busy down there now, guys. Everybody's starting to come in, peeling in one at a time. Rusty oh, Wallace, Rusty. Mike Skinner. Rusty Wallace finally gonna get him some left side tires on that car. Oh, Terry Labonte, Kurt Busch, Kenny Schrader, Jeremy Mayfield are also in. Rusty was really backing up. Uh, his car he started running way up the track, running the high side, and he was having a problem. Bill Elliott comes in, Ricky Craven, and Ricky Rudd and Sterling Marlin pitting. All under green, lap 95. Clear low, clear low. Clear out to the five, there you go. I'll tell you one thing, if you look away, if you happen to look down pit road and look back, you say, where'd that guy go? They're doing these stops so fast, and here comes the leader. Dale Jarrett's in along with Tony Stewart as you watch Ricky Rudd's pit stop. Chassis adjustment, one turn in the right rear. Kevin Hall fixed the left front fender at the bottom. Mike Wallace, Joe Nemechek pitting, Todd Bodine, and Elliot Sadler come in. Steve? Dale Jarrett's in, Mike. Darren Jolly and Jeff Knight are the tire carriers on this car. There will not be any chassis adjustments. Four tires, gas can flies to the catch can, man. Left side tires going on. Good stop for Dale Jarrett. Boy, that's an awesome stop. Kevin Harvick, Ward Burton, and Mark Martin are in. Jeannie? Well, here comes Happy. That would be Kevin Harvick's nickname, and he is happy because he's having a good race, guys. Four tires, some gas. His real problem out here is he's trying to get Rusty Wallace out of his way. He may have just shook him with his last pit stop. 
All green flag pit stops. Elliott Sadler, last week's winner coming out. Harvick coming out. Jerry Nadu coming in. That's Ward Burton, middle of your screen. As Nadu comes in for service. Said that Harvick's name is Happy. I mean, you know, all that's going on with that kid, he ought to be happy. Now, through all this, Dale Earnhardt Jr. not pitted yet. He is the leader, but he cannot be much further behind these guys because he's given up some pretty valuable time, these guys, to fresh tires. What I like is, you know, don't come on pit road when all these other cars are on pit road. Let these guys make their stops and gives me a clean shot into my pit box. Matt Kenseth is in. That leaves Jason Leffler on the racetrack with Bobby Labonte and the leader, Dale Earnhardt Jr. No, nope, here's Leffler in as well. Plus, you got to think, if the caution came out right now, look where Junior would be. I mean, he'd have half the field, two-thirds of the field, a lap down. You don't pit until you have to. That's always been my philosophy. Run her out of gas if you can. Buckshot Jones stopping, and we just about cycled through the field as Bobby Hamilton comes in, just waiting on the leader now. And our leader is on pit road. Got a good run through three and four. That's so important on a green flag stop. That's where you make your time up. I just really think it's a spotter, and everybody's doing a good job for Dale Jr. today. They're keeping him out there, bringing him down pit road when pit road is clean. Matt? Ty Norris is that spotter for Dale and Art Jr., warning him about the pit road speed. We did see a few people get caught yesterday. 45 miles per hour is the speed today. Dale Jr., as he makes his way into his pit box, was complaining about his car being very arrow sensitive. He would get an arrow push and get up behind the leader of Dale Jr., the 88 car, but they don't want to make any significant changes to this number eight car, so it will be four tires of fuel. Tony Uri Jr., the car keeping cousin of Dale Earnhardt Jr., up to the front front, and he's down the way. 15.4 seconds to Steve Burns. Well, Matt, as you said, Bobby Labonte had complained about being very tight with these overcast skies. He stayed out when Dale Earnhardt Jr. pitted so he could get five bonus points. Here he comes to the attention of the Jimmy Maycar leg crew. They had talked about pulling a spring rubber out, but what they're going to do is take a half pound out of the left rear tire. He said the car is getting a little better the longer it runs. Jeff Chandler on the front tire, Barry Cook on the back. And Bobby Labonte is away 15.1 seconds on that stop. Now, I was talking to Bobby Labonte last night. He said, no, DW, you picked me to win a couple of races, and I, I had trouble in both those races. Don't pick me today, but <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't stop watching him to be there at the end. So we've cycled through pit stops, and Dale Jarrett will once again pick up the lead. We should mention Michael Waltrip is back in the race after that uh, lap four crash that replaced a radiator, suspension arms, and a brake rotor on his car, but he is out making laps. So Jarrett is back to the lead here at Texas after 102 laps and green flag pit stops are completed. Can the Simpsons survive being lost in the jungle? Maybe he'll lead us to bananas. Or more mouth-watering monkeys. The Simpsons, all new at 8, 7 central tonight on Fox. We're in Central Park, kids. Oh, wow, look at Chinatown. Hey, look, a giant ape is climbing the Empire State Building. Ford Windstar is the first vehicle to earn the government's quadruple five-star safety rating and the only one to offer the optional Visteon rear seat entertainment system. Peace of mind plus peace and quiet. Oh, look, a dinosaur is eating the World Trade Center. Oh, look, kids, another video. Awesome! Get a loaded Windstar with 0-9 financing or $2,000 cash back at your Tri-State Quality Ford store. Ah, infinite possibilities. Remember that feeling? Kind of like when you first got the Internet. But lately, does it feel a bit constraining? Chances are, slow logons and disconnects are really, well, holding you back. Free yourself with the AT&T 7-7 offer and get unlimited internet access and long distance together. Only $7 a month gives you AT&T WorldNet service with the fastest logon times and better, more reliable connections and seven cents a minute long distance all day, every day. Both for less than half of what you're probably paying right now. So call 1-800-223-9000 for seven cents a minute long distance and unlimited AT&T WorldNet service for just $7 a month. The AT&T 7-7 offer. The future is what you make of it. 
Pocono. This is the track known for its awesome restarts, incredible high speeds, long straightaways with three demanding turns, and a fan favorite pit paddock pass that puts you near all the action. The stars of NASCAR invade Pocono Raceway twice this year. June 17th, it's the Pocono 500 with a post-race concert by Billy Ray Cyrus. And July 29th, it's the Pennsylvania 500 with a post-race concert by Travis Tritt. So call now, 1-800-RACEWAY. That's 1-800-RACEWAY. Operators standing by. Racing is brought to you locally by Pocono Raceway. Welcome back to the Harris 500 at Texas Motor Speedway. Dale Jarrett out in front now by three seconds over Steve Park, who has taken over second place after green flag pit stops. Okay, today's Pep Boys trivia, everybody can play. Which driver got his first Bush Series and Cup Series win in the brief history of Texas Motor Speedway? Oh, man, it, that's easy. Folks, if you don't know this, you don't know your NASCAR. <laughs> that's easy. He started on the pole. He started okay. on the pole, yeah. Uh, he's a third-generation driver. Yeah. Famous racing family. Car's red. Dale Earnhardt Jr. His name ain't Bud, but his car is. <laughs> <laughs> Now, look at this. Folks, this is the telling tale right here. This is why the driver has so much to do with how he comes in and how he goes out. We talk about it all the time. Look at these times. These are in seconds. This is from the start-finish line, coming around to come into the pits, and then making your pit stop and coming back to the start-finish line. Look at the difference in the times. Dale Jarrett, who's leading the race, come in and a minute, uh, 104 seconds, .87. But look down here at Todd Bodine, who's up in the top five right now. He's at 103.42, so he got in and out better than anybody. And that's why he's up to fourth place. And that's why he's up in the running order. There we watched Dale Earnhardt Jr. did a good job of getting the pit road. They tried to set it up. They tried to wait. The pit road was clear. There was a guy there in the pit box blocking him in. I was, bragging, time. I was bragging on him of what a great job they were doing to keeping him out until the pit lane was clear. When he comes down the pit lane, there's a car two laps down in front of him. The best laid plan. I just hate it. And that's when I'd be hogging my crew trees, too. Why did you bring me in? Why didn't you wait? Todd Bodine in the 66 car. That was a brand new car for here. And they did not. Here's we got the, this is, shows the interval behind the leader right here on the Fox tracks. You see he's about 14, 15 seconds behind the leader. This is going through turn three and four right here. But they wind tunneled this car, and the car showed good downforce numbers in the wind tunnel. And again, with only seven tests, Sometimes that's how a car has to be determined to go to the racetrack by how it showed in the wind tunnel. Well, if it wind tunnel's good and they got chassis dynos to run the engines on now and the chassis dyno says the engine is good, then you come to the track and you've just got to fine tune your chassis and you should have a good race car. And the chassis dyno tells how much horsepower is at the rear wheel. Exactly. Leader in traffic, passing Bodine's teammate Jimmy Spencer, who got tangled up in the first caution flag of the day on lap four. This is starting to sound so easy and, and so simple that I think even me and Jeff might be able to go back out there and do it again. <laughs> hey, for fools. What are you doing? Oh. <laughs> Here's second place Steve Park, and this is not April Fools. He's really running in second place, and he's about 1.8 seconds behind the leader. Again, they made no adjustments on that race car, and I do not envy a crew chief's position here. Your car's a little loose. You know you want to tighten it up, tighten it up but you're so scared to tighten it up because you know the racetrack, especially with being overclass, is going to be tighter. It's going to be tighter. The car's going to turn less and less as the day goes on. Well, that's where you got to listen to the driver. I mean, you really got to listen to what he's telling you. Look at the lap times and make decisions based on what the driver's telling you. Believe it or not. I mean, I know you crew chiefs sometimes don't do that, but that's what you should do. <laughs> And my red-headed wife, Stephanie, was sitting over here when I said something about driving a car again, and I thought she was going to jump down here on top of me. Now, here's the leader between Jarrett and Park in real time as they go past the condominiums in turn two. Fairly constant. Staying about two and a half seconds. Jarrett now, and what's going to happen, Dale Jarrett, you see all this traffic he's in right there. That's yeah, he's gonna right let, in there. That's going to let Steve Park really close it up. I believe, I know Jarrett's car is good on the longer runs, but I, I believe Steve Park is an equal to Jarrett if he could get up there to him. 
Mark's had a funny day. He hasn't much had to race anybody. He's had a lot of clear air right in front of him as you see him close in. In one lap, back to turn two, halfway down the back stretch, he's closed up three quarters of a second. But I stress Dale Jarrett, he's got about four or five cars there he's trying to work down to 1.2 seconds here in the middle of three and four. You can see how he's closing up. Well, if, you know, once Jarrett gets through this crowd, then Park's got to get through it too. So it'll be, the difference is going to be who can get through there the best. And Jarrett's getting through there right now and Park's catching up to the back of them right here. Now he's got to work those cars, but they are getting spread out a little bit. But now, Daryl, you'll fight the leader to keep from going a lap down, but will you fight that second place car as hard? Well, theoretically you shouldn't. Once you go a lap down, keep the leader in sight. You got a chance to get a lap back, you're going to work real hard. If not, let that second place guy get up there and race. And here you see Steve Park. He's pulled right up on the back of the 99 of Jeff Burton that Dale Jarrett had to fight a minute ago. Jeff Burton, he's moving over a little bit, letting Steve Park go on. Again, the leader's done yardage. Why fight somebody else? And now Jarrett, with a little bit of clear field in front of him, opens up a little bit of a lead again. But as you can see, they're now they're they're both in the screen now. And a while ago, we couldn't see Park, so he made a lot of gains on uh, Jarrett right there. And it's all about where you catch guys. I mean, if you catch uh, cars in the corners, well, obviously you got to slow down. You catch them on the straightaways, they'll move over and let you go. And Dale Jarrett has done caught a pack of another five race cars. That's going to allow Steve Park to even close more. Terry Labonte right behind Rusty Wallace. Up to 15th place, just ahead of Mark Martin. Started 42nd. I talked to those guys this morning. They was not happy in happy hour, not happy at all. In fact, they thought they had a motor problem, changed the motor because they thought it was leaking, and it was actually the transmission seal leaking. There was nothing wrong with the motor. Lost a lot of track time, throwed four springs, a few shots at that car. Looks like it's working out here. He's on the lead lap, and again, running in 15th position. Well, having won this race, and not really having a lot of changes here. I know the tires are a little different, but I'd be putting that set up that I won with here the last time, and uh, I'd be pretty happy with that, I believe. Maybe not a whole field advantage today for Terry Labonte. Next week, we go to the Wood Brothers home track, Martinsville, Virginia. Just a short ride over the mountains from Stewart. They're south of Roanoke, between Roanoke and Greensboro, actually. Beautiful racetrack in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and slam-bang short track action once again. And I, and I love short track racing. It's all about driver. It's not about aerodynamics. It's not about all that downforce. It's all about finesse and driving that race car and getting it down in that corner and getting back in the throttle. It's one of the few places you slow down, you'll run a lot faster. You got that right. You have to slow down, you wear your brakes out. Big, big track for hard on brakes. Here comes Park. He's caught the leader, and he wants the lead. Classic Ford Chevrolet battle here. Well, it took Dale Jarrett a while to work uh, past Ken Schrader and put Schrader a lap down. And Park capitalized. And don't count to... Junior out either. He's right here lurking right behind these two cats. So uh, both the EI cars are running pretty good. This look, looking out the back of Tony Stewart's car, he's in 18th position. And he's one of those guys that's going to try to fight and stay on the lead lap. Mike Skinner in the 31 car, he's coming to pit road for an unscheduled stop. Well, looking at these tires, he's been into something. Look at all the letters rubbed off of him. He's got up against somebody. Yeah, there's damage down the right side of that car just uh, behind the door. Now, the rear tire changer on this car, it's Clint Pittman from the number 21 Bush Grand National car that Mike drove yesterday. Sam Tubbs, who's a fabricator for the 29 car, who normally changes rear tires, was in a bad wreck Friday night. Went to the hospital, but he's home, and we wish him well. Look forward to seeing him back, hopefully, at Martinsville. How do you know so much about all those guys? I go in that garage. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to tell me because you used to work for them. I went in there in the dark this morning. <laughs> it was dark early this morning. My wife told me that. Good bit of damage to the right side of Mike Skinner's car, and he falls off the lead lap with that unscheduled pit stop. Here's the distance of the lead. Looking back from Dale Jarrett back to Steve Park. And it's 85 consecutive green flag laps. That's not unusual for Texas. The only time we have a problem here is on the start. Once we get racing here and get the groove moved up, we seem to be able to just run the whole race without any caution.
So Jarrett with just several car lengths on Steve Park with Dale Earnhardt Jr., the pole sitter third, Jeff Gordon and Todd Bodine, the top five here in Texas. What's going on? Hey. Wow, this is nice. But I thought Stacy said if you bought new tools, she gets a new dining room set. Yeah, she did. So where are the table and chairs? You're standing on them. <laughs> Fine woodworking tools from Rigid. Name proven by pros since 1923. Take our innovative oscillating sander that converts from a spindle to belt sander in seconds. Rigid. Buy them at the Home Depot. First in home improvement. My heroes don't catch touchdowns. They don't slam dunk. They don't hit home runs. They don't score goals. They don't give smackdowns. My heroes burn rubber. They fight steel. They bleed octane. They risk their life in every turn, on every track, in every race. My heroes race cars. Fast cars. That girl, the one at the register, she takes me. Mm -hmm. No, check it out. She gave me this frozen coke for free. A Whopper says free food tastes a lot like love. Buy a Whopper and get your choice. Cheese and bacon topping, Hershey pie, or frozen coke. Free. You do know you're a moron, right? In the land of burgers, the flame-boiled Whopper is king. Gotta be a Grand Prix driver. Pontiac Grand Prix with wide track handling. Its wheels are set wide for better control and grip in the curves. Wider is better. Now, during the Pontiac's 75th anniversary, lease a new wide track Grand Prix for as low as $277 a month. See your Pontiac dealer today. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot, is brought to you by MBNA, issuer of the official NASCAR credit card. Log on, MBNA.com. Welcome back to the Texas Motor Speedway with Jeff Hammond, Chris Myers, and the Hollywood Hotel. You know, when Dale Jarrett won at Darlington and edged out Steve Park for that victory, Jeff, he said if it had gone on a few miles longer, Steve Park would have won the race. He had the better car. Does it look like that today? It appears to right now. Uh, so far, I see Steve Park getting stronger and stronger. I look for maybe those guys to make a few more adjustments before long and be right back there. And it may be settled once again, like at Darlington, in the pits. For Jarrett, this is the same car that he took to Atlanta when he won the pole and finished fourth, the same car that he used to win at Darlington. So it's the third race in the history of this car, which was built during the winter months. And he said, coming in, this is one of those tracks where you absolutely have to have a good engine to do well. The emphasis is on power. Well, obviously right now, the 88 car has got a strong piece in his car. But also the guys at DEI have got a lot of good power too. They're probably the strongest General Motors car out there today. Got early wins, sitting on poles. They got a lot of power and they can get the job done too. But I really look for the DEI guys to make that one little final adjustment because I think Steve Park feels like Dale Jarrett owes him one. Three DEI cars starting in the top ten. Just two cautions for nine laps. We've had three leaders and four lead changes. Let's go back upstairs, Mike. And two unscheduled pit stops, Andy Houston and Mike Skinner has come back in. Mike Skinner, we got the, the fact a while ago that he actually went up and scraped the wall with the right side. They'd come back to pit road to try to set the toe out. There you see they've got a, what they're doing, they're adjust this guy right here, he's adjusting the tie rod underneath there. You run about an eighth inch of toe out. That's the distance between the front of the front wheels and the rear of the front wheels, and he's hit the wall. You can see the stripes yeah. here. He's hit the wall and knocked the toe out out. He's hit it twice because before that number wasn't yeah. all rumpled up, just I a little just, bit of the lettering. I could just see the tires were scuffed up the last uh, first time in, but now he's got the body damage too. That's Royce McGee talking on the radio, and what he did, he went underneath, loosened the tie rod, and adjusted know, the tie rod that controls the toe out. Again. And they got a string they're running down through there, and folks, the tallest buildings in the world okay. are built okay, off the string, so that'll work right for there, them. See if that helps you. I got a good turn and a half in it. Go, Mike. What he's saying, he adjusted the tie rod about a turn and a half to get the toe out back in, back right. And you can't drive one of these things when they get the toe messed up in them because it, it, the, you're going 190 miles an hour. And if you get any part of the suspension messed up, then you can't drive these things. Well, Dale Jarrett has opened up a little bit of a lead now on Steve Park. Two lap cars separate the two leaders. There's Jarrett pulling down on Mark Martin to try to put the 15th place car a lap down. Back behind them, Jeff Gordon and 
Todd Bodine and Ricky Rudd, Bobby Labonte, Johnny Benson, and Sterling Marlin, Elliott Sadler. Here comes uh, Gordon and Bodine right there. They've been having to go at it. They've swapped that position about four or five times in the last 10, 12 laps. Good run for Todd and only his second Winston Cup start. And there is caution on the speedway for the third time today. Big break for Kurt Busch. He's going to get a lap back. Here comes uh, Mike Wallace got a lap back, and Stoney Stewart was trying to, but didn't quite make it. There's debris at the start finish line, a piece of metal. Rather than have that cut a tire and cause a bigger problem, the caution has come out here for the third time. Tough break for Andy Houston, who had made an unscheduled pit stop under green about 10 laps ago. Oh, Pierre has reared his ugly head. Pierre Debris? Pierre Debris. I'm sure you've heard of me. <laughs> Very famous in racing. A little bit there to be picked up as well. That debris, that's just that's just yeah. off the tires. That's just tire rubber. But that is what will get up on a header pipe up inside the car there and cause the car to smoke or the car to cause you to think there might be something wrong with the car. You pick that up on these hot tires and throw it up in the engine bay and it falls down in the headers and it'll smoke and scare the heck out of the driver and the engine builder, by the way. It's been about 35 to 40 laps since everybody's been on pit road. Pit road will be a busy place. I'm sure four tires for everybody, especially Johnny Benson and Rusty Wallace. They haven't been to that. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking Rusty's going to be happy to get him four more tires on his car. 136 laps in, just about 200 miles complete. And here come the cars on the lead lap to make pit stops. Jeannie? Well, guys, this stop couldn't have come early enough for Todd Bodine. He's been having some handling problems out there. Tight in the middle and out of the turf. They're going to make some air pressure adjustments to all four tires they put in. And take two rounds of wedge out. Steve Burt. Dale Jarrett said he's just a little bit tight, Jeannie, but they're not going to make any chassis adjustments to this number 88. Left tires, left side tires going on. Gas it very fast stop again. Let's go to Matt Yoko. The third place car, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the middle of your three. An air pressure adjustment on the right front. They're trying to free that car up. Let's go to Dick Berger. Uh, Jeff Gordon has just come in and made a 15.5 second pit stop. He had complained all the way through that run that his car had a vibration. He thought perhaps it had to do with the tires. Uh, Andy Houston, who is pitted right next to him, pitted just a few laps before that caution flag. And indeed, he did have a tire problem. Big chunk out of the right front on that one. Mike? So at 137 laps, well, we'll be good to go for, what, 65 or 70 more, Larry? And well, that, I've already been calculating. They can do it on two more stops from here. But that chunk out of that right front tire, whoa, me, that would worry me to death. Caution out for debris on the front straightaway. Third caution of the day here in Texas. You're watching Winston Cup Racing presented by Home Depot. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, stop your feet. You remember Jared from Subway? Turns out he's inspired a lot of people. He's still looking good to show you the way. His name is Jared and he'll lead you to Subway. That's where it goes along with the rest. For seven sandwiches and six grams of fat or less. What an inspiration. Subway. Eat fresh. Today. If you want to win in today's world, you can't afford to go it alone. It takes teamwork and training to win, just like the winning team that builds quality cars and trucks on the assembly line. UAWGM, assembly line to finish line, teamwork wins. The action, the heart, the soul of NASCAR, every day, only at NASCAR.com. America Online, keyword, NASCAR. 
NASCAR Winston Cup Racing presented by the Home Depot. Brought to you by UAW GM. Assembly line to finish line. Teamwork wins. By Warner Brothers' new motion picture driven in theaters everywhere this spring. This film is not yet rated. By Subway, showing the world how great a fresh sandwich can taste. Subway, fresh. And by Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Welcome back to the Texas Motor Speedway as we have the Pizza Hut race recap, the Bush race yesterday here at the Texas Motor Speedway. Kevin Harvick, the last pass, and his first Bush victory this year, his fourth victory on the Bush circuit. As you see, the results of that race, and Kevin Harvick is the points leader on the Bush series. Jeff Burton finishing second yesterday. Jeff Hammond, Kevin Harvick. Once again, emphasize, hey, I'm still going to run the Bush Series, and I'm still going to run Winston Cup. And in fact, he said, the only thing I need now is jet fuel to keep us going. He thinks it's an advantage for a young driver like that. When does it become a disadvantage? I don't think it becomes a dis disadvantage anytime soon because I really think the kid has got an opportunity right here where his age and his motivation will carry him for the rest of this year. I mean, he's got a great crew behind him, his Bush team. He's also got a great Winston Cup team. So I feel like he's just really just motivated at that point. I don't care how much time you put him behind the wheel, and those laps are very important. You've got to get laps if you don't have a lot of experience. And they're going green. Harvick was 11th at last check. Dale Jarrett, your leader. Let's go back upstairs to Mike Joy. Well, everybody's made a pit stop except us here in the booth, so while we do, why don't you just take that surround sound and crank it up and enjoy this restart full bore. the back bumper of Jared as they come off the turn four. Man, he wants back up in the lead, too. And here he comes. How about the guy following him? Andy Houston, that 96 car. He wants some of that lead as well up there with those guys. I remember Houston. Yeah, he's got, oh, got a car going high down here in turn one. It's Sterling Marlin. He's going to hang on to it. And a lap ago, Jeremy Mayfield and Ricky Rudd got together at the start-finish line, trading a little sheet metal. Restarts are always exciting. <laughs> trying to get his speed back here. Trying to get his heart caught back up. <laughs> now the luckiest man in Texas is Mark Martin. Just as the caution came out, he was about to go a lap down when all the rest of the lead lap cars pitted. Martin stayed out and picked up five points for leading a lap. Here we go down into turn one. I think you're going to see Sterling Marlin. He's going to get... Oh, might have got a little help there. I couldn't really tell, but Kenson gave him a little shot. It looked like he might have got into him right there and sent him up the hill. It's a great save, I know that. Now there's his teammate Leffler right there battling with Marlin. So then Martin made his pit stop after picking up five points for leading a lap. Dick Bergman? Well, he also got lucky in that pit stop, Mike, because of his position and because the caution flag stayed out, they had some time to work on the car. And they pulled the spring rubbers out of the left side in hopes that it's going to make this thing handle a bit better. Right now, he is the last man on the lead lap. 25, meanwhile, is slowing down. Jerry Nadeau having a problem with his race car. Well, Nadeau got in a wreck early in the race here, and I just don't think the car's handling all that good, and he got shoved up out of line. I think he's just trying to get to the back and get out of everybody's way because he's already gotten in one wreck. He doesn't want to get in another one. Back on point, remember after each of the restarts, those two Chevrolets of Park and Earnhardt have been very quick. It's a matter of time, though, on long runs, though, before Dale Jarrett runs them down. The whole DEI brigade right there, Steve Park, Dale Earnhardt Jr., Michael Walter, of course, Michael back out there just trying to limp around after that wreck early in the race. But here's these two guys running first and second. 
Michael's going to have to take his car back to the Napa store. He's got to need some more pots. Dale Jarrett in the 88 car. He's he's in the fifth position right now. It looked like he might have got kicked up. Car got a little out of shape. Lost those three or four positions. I just don't think he's that good on restarts. Clear I think he's good on the longer on the runs, but not that good on restarts. Kind of opposite of what we saw at Darlington. It's like he's cast his lure in water. And he's letting out a lot of line. He'll reel it back in again. I can't ex I can't express enough that this is a 500 mile race. We got a long way to go, and you got to take care of your equipment. About 225 miles completed here out of the 500. Went off in the corner, just touched that brake pedal just a little bit off that throttle, but he wasn't off of it for about two seconds. Back on that throttle off turn four. Here we go down the front stretch, 189, 191, 194. Now remember, 96. 96. <laughs> this is seven laps after a restart. He's got fresh tires on there, runs a little quicker. I look at Tony Stewart, who has given up as many as three positions in a lap in this run since the restart. Well, you're talking about time they're running 29-20. They were running right around 30 flat before the before the uh, pit stop, so they picked up a lot of speed since the last pit stop. Tony Stewart going down the back stretch, 192 miles an hour, down in the corner right here, touched the brake a little bit, wide open, Bobby Labonte. way before the center of the corner. Bobby Labonte's off the pace. He's down on the apron going down into turn one, guys. There is Labonte, who started on the outside pole. What a dismal season the Winston Cup champion is having. He crossed the line last time by running in the seventh position. Car looked good. He's been running well, but uh, he's got something majorly wrong. Steve? Guys, I just walked over to the crew. They looked at me and said he broke a rod. It was that simple. Oh. Looks like they're already packing up the crew. So Labonte coasting in with the engine shut off. And Tony Stewart dropping back. Not a good day here in Texas so far for Joe Gibbs Racing. Not a good year so far for that whole no. team. You know, they just keep struggling. When you talk about team, though, look at these two teammates right here. Steve Park leading the race. Dale Earnhardt Jr. running second. Park's already won a race this year. Junior runs second at Daytona, and he is wanting to win a race badly. And this could be the weekend he does it. the Fox track compared to miles per hour on our two leaders right here. Looks like Junior actually drove into turn three a little harder than Park did and it shows on the track because he caught him a good bit. They come off the corner about the same miles per hour though about 170, 172 on it in turn four down the front stretch right here. These two guys right here Todd Bodine and Jeff Gordon, they have been working on each other ever since the race started. They've been fighting for that fourth and fifth spot the whole race. Except now it's four guys, Daryl. It's Todd, it's Jeff, it's Dale Jarrett, and it's Ricky Rudd all battling. That's four, uh, four pretty good cars right there right now. They all look like their cars are handling well, and all the drivers look pretty comfortable. You know, Jarrett's not gaining on them right now. Don't Looks like he's that, losing Greg. a little bit of distance to Gordon. Well, they may have made a change on that pit stop, you know, that he doesn't like, and uh, he's just going to ride it out until uh, the next time we get back in the pit. There's the interval from Todd Bodine to the race leader. 2.8 seconds, fairly stable. Boy, Jeff Gordon really gets a run up off the corner, beats him back to the throttle, pulls right up on him. That old Yates motor in that 66 <laughs> car, though. Robert Yates doing the motor for those cars. It takes over on the front stretch. And yeah. there he goes. He moves up and let, he lets uh, Gordon go by. For more on Gordon, Dick Bergman. Well, we're going to tell you about Dale Jarrett instead. He is understeering. That car is pushing, and that is the symptom that we have heard drivers complain about most since arriving here in Texas. Some push coming in, some push in the middle, some push coming off. But that has been the common complaint rather than anything else, and that is what is affecting that number 88 car right now. Another pair of teammates close on the racetrack. Ricky Rudd, I talked to his crew chief, Michael McSwain, last night. He was out there trying to put a grill together where he could cook his supper. But he, they had so much confidence about the way they run in the final practice. He said the last time we remember feeling this way was at Michigan last year when they led so many laps and lost it there on a late race caution. Yeah, uh, Ricky told me that he really liked his car. He's very happy with it. Best car he's had this year. For the third time this season, Bobby Labonte has failed to finish. Jeannie's with him. Yeah, Bobby Labonte, another frustrating outing here, wants to tell us what happened. We heard you broke a rod, is that correct? Uh, I think it's something on the bottom end of the motor. Uh, you know, hated for all the guys on the Interstate Batteries Pontiac. Um, had a pretty decent run today, better than we've run in the past. And um, 
just hate to have to leave here early, but it looks like uh, it's pretty terminal. This is a track that loved Bobby Labonte. Disappointing finish to this day. Steve Park and Dale Earnhardt Jr. work around Jimmy Spencer. His car damaged in the lap four accident that put Michael Waltrip behind the wall for quite a while. And even though Andy Houston's a couple laps down, I mean, he's still maintaining a pretty good pace out there. He's right in front of Jeff Gordon. There's another cat that's having a good run, that 97 car. Stacy Compton there. 97 Kirk cars Bush. in 15th place. Jeff? One thing I'd like to point out as far as Kirk Bush's car is concerned, this week they've also got a new crew chief. Ben Leslie, who last week was car chief on the 17 car, Matt Kenseth, has now moved over to try to help this young rookie get back on track and look like they're putting a pretty solid run here today. And Jeff, they tested out here, but he tested without his new crew chief, Ben Leslie, because Ben just become the crew chief about a week ago. That's exactly right, Larry. And I talked to both those guys today, and their mission right now in life is to get to where Kirk Bush can run the entire race, no matter whether it's 500 miles here or 500 laps next week at Martinsville. They're going to get back to where this kid can get some laps in these Winston Cup cars so he can get the experience necessary to go up there and, and race these guys for the win because, you know, a year ago in the truck races, he was fantastic. Kurt Busch is 15th. He's the last car on the lead lap and will go right up in front of him to this three-car battle of Terry Labonte with Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin. This race is for 12. All these owners right now, and drivers included, are looking for chemistry. They're looking for a crew chief that, that can relate and talk to the driver, that they can communicate and get some results. It's a frustrating thing to have the, be the owner and have the driver come say, I don't like my crew chief, or the crew chief says, I can't work with this driver, and you've got to make changes if you're going to have any success. We talked about Mark Martin a while ago in the sixth car about leading laps. With leading a while ago, he has now led at least one lap in all seven races. He's accumulated 40 bonus points just from leading, because all you got to do is lead one lap to get five points. 40 points, seven races into the season, could make, make a big difference at the end of the year. Look at relative speeds of those three cars battling. 20 on the tires, 2-0. That's Jimmy Finning telling Mark Martin, this Mark's crew chief, got 20 laps on these tires since the last time they changed. The thing about staying out and leading the lap, though, Larry, is when you come in, you're going to be at the, at the tail end We're of all the lap cars, the lead lap cars, so you're going to lose a lot of track positions to gain those five points. But if you're a big picture racer, it can pay off at the end of the year. But you know, while ago, DW, with about 17 cars on the lead lap, he was about the 16th or 17th place car, so he really didn't give up a lot by doing it. Already. And Mark led the most right. laps in Las Vegas, a very similar shape track to this one. Which is an extra five bonus points for leading right. the most laps. Right now, Steve Park is coming across to lead his 22nd lap of this race. Dale Jarrett's led 86, Earnhardt Jr.'s led 49. We've completed 163 laps in Texas. You're watching Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by the Home Depot. Introducing the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. heavy-duty pickup you can get. Silverado heavy-duty. More truck from Chevy. favorite shows digitally so you can watch them whenever you want ultimate tv watch what you can do zesty 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 times two the only thing zestier than eating a crunchy taco bell taco is eating two crunchy taco bell tacos zesty party of two a tale of two zesty uno dos zesty there's nothing like doubling up on America's number one taco. And right now, you can do it for just 99 cents. Two crunchy tacos for 99 cents. Get them at the bell. Hello, Zesty. <laughs> Call Winnie. Hello. Zesty!
222 million viewers have experienced it. Men don't use these anymore! No, sir! Find out why America's talking about boot camp at 9, 8 Central, Fox, Wednesday. Welcome back to the Texas Motor Speedway, and this quick reminder, on Fox Sports Net tonight at 9, every Sunday night, NASCAR Victory Lane, a wrap-up on all the weekend activity. And with us today, the Budweiser.com airship, reminding all race fans that Budweiser is NASCAR's official beer. And Dale Earnhardt Jr. in the Budweiser 8 car, currently running second behind Steve Park. But how about Bobby Labonte, last year's points champion? In all 34 starts last year, Jeff Hammond, he finished every race. He's out of this race. This is the third, did not finish so far this season. That's quite a turnaround for Joe Gibbs Racing in the body. Unfortunately, Chris, that's what you call that's racing. One year it's your year, the next year it's not. Unfortunately for these guys right here, everybody was expecting them to come back out and repeat. They haven't been able to get back on track. But as he said, they're doing some things for the engines this year, I think a little bit different than a year ago. They've had some problems. That bottom end problem could have been a connecting rod where it broke. Connecting rod holds a piston to the crankshaft, or it could have been a piston that failed. They didn't work too sure. And look at after six races where Labonte was, Mark Barton, Jeff Burton, and where are they now? The problems that they're having, that's part of Roush Racing, which also the cat in the hat must be ready to eat the green eggs and ham the way things are going. Well, he's a racer. He understands sometimes there's going to be years that you're going to have to work through it. He's been there before, and believe me, these guys aren't quitters. They'll get back on track, and that man at number six car right there, believe me, he's probably one of the toughest guys out there. Mark Martin has run well at the Texas Motor Speedway. Let's go to Matt Yoka for a check on the leaders, Matt. Right now, Chris, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is running in second, about four tenths behind teammate and leader Steve Park. We've well documented today the fact that Dale Jr. is fighting an arrow push. So they radioed to Stevie Reeves, who is Steve Park's spotter, that if he gets close enough, will Park adjust his line going in the corner, just entering the corner, so that way Dale Jr. can get a little more air on the front of that car. They have done that, but he's still fighting that arrow push. Dale, they're talking about making some more adjustments on that car as they've done all day, just trying to fix it, but they don't want to make too many to go too far. Mark with about a six-tenths of a second lead on Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Gordon is third, three and a half seconds off the leader. We heard Steve Mill talk about that those cars have two distinctive different setups. Parks running on bump stops, real soft springs, letting the car ride on bump stops. Bill Jr., on the other hand, has got stiffer springs, and he's not riding on bump stops. When you've got the stiffer spring, the car will not get down in the track like the car with the softer springs will, particularly when the track gets slick. And what Steve Park can do for Dale Earnhardt Jr. is he can move his entrance up. Dale Earnhardt Jr. can get that left front out of hit Steve Park's air. That's the corner you want to plant is that left front. Yeah, because the air goes around these, corner, uh, around these cars like that. If you're in this pocket back here, then you're not getting any air on your front end. And you're losing all your downforce. So you got to get that. See how he's out, but out to the inside of that car? That puts downforce on that left front corner right there. This battle is for 12th place. Terry Labonte, Kurt Busch with Mark Martin and Sterling Marlin. Here comes Marlin to the inside, and Martin just lets him go. That's, uh, that's classic Mark Martin. He does not want to race somebody. Now, last week, Martin had a fast car, but his teammate, Jeff Burton, crashed in front of him. Mark piled into him, and, Darrell, you talked to Jack Roush about that last week at Bristol. <laughs> I, I asked you, I said, isn't that, that's about a car owner's worst nightmare, isn't it? And he said, no, not, not, honestly, it wasn't. So what do you mean by that? He said, it's the first thing that's happened this year they haven't blamed me for. <laughs> Bush is trying to give last year's pole sitter and the 99 race winner here, Terry Bobani, a workover. Bush has got a good-looking car. I mean, he has passed a lot of cars, and he's right up in there in the thick of things. Not out of this race by any means. They were scheduled to make a sponsor announcement, we understood this morning, for Kurt Bush for the rest of the season. They, they did unveil a car down there, and I think Sharpie, who's actually going to sponsor a race later on in this season, what a fitting sponsor. As many Sharpies as these drivers <laughs> use to sign autographs, they'll be start on that car starting at Martinsville. Well, now he's got a, had a little run there underneath Labonte. Look at the 43. I, I think he's dropped a cylinder or something. Well, here's a pass for uh, Kurt Busch going by Terry Labonte. They've been fighting each other pretty hard here. He finally made the pass. I was going to say something about the 43. Looks like he might have lost a cylinder or something. He's uh, really slowing down. Yeah, John Andretti is 35th, Daryl, and uh, he's he's kind of been rattling around off pace. Yeah, he see he's pulling down out of the way. It's like it's uh, maybe only running on seven cylinders. So 
he joins the Ron Hornaday and Michael Waltrip of the cars that are moving at let's say less than race pace. How fast is, is uh, Andretti going? 160 miles an hour, 159 off the corner. Remember, those guys a while ago was running over 170 coming off the corner. Yeah, and 190 into the corner, so he's way, way off the pace. There well, that, folks, will show you how fast this place is. How do you look slow running 170 <laughs> miles an hour? A guy passes you doing 180. <laughs> That's how. <laughs> Steve Park has opened it up to seven tenths of a second now over Earnhardt Jr. Let's show you speeds of these cars as they come past the line. Out of our Fox box. Earnhardt Jr. a little bit quicker there. And Johnny Benson the fastest thus far on this lap. And I think it's, it's really interesting to me how some of these guys complain about the, the new tire and they can't get their car to drive as good. But there's two cars running first and second that are set up totally different and getting good results. Parkworks under Bill Elliott. All right, I've been watching the one car here, Steve Park. All right, see his top grill opening right there? He's got more tape on the left side. It goes back to what we talked about a while ago. Anything you can do to plant that left front corner, it's going to put more down for us. See, he's got more tape right there. I'm all over the place with the Telestrator. But you see on the top opening, he's taped the left side, letting the air go through the right side. You see how high it, the car tries to raise up on the left front? That's because you got to take spring out of the right rear to get the bite, get the car to be tight enough for you. That causes the weight to transfer over, and it'll pick that left front up. So you got to aerodynamically tighten that car back up or push that front end down with that fender right there. How long has it been that duct tape has been a tuning tool? <laughs> I've been in it 20 years, and, and it was in, it in there when I come on board. Yeah, but for tuning, for aerodynamically tuning. Speaking of tuning, how about this battle for ninth? Kevin Harvick, he's worked his way in the top 10, just takes that ninth position away from Elliot Sadler. Elliot Sadler, who won at Bristol last week. Kevin Harvick, who won about a month ago in his second or third race in the 29 car. Steve Park, the Rockingham winner, with an eight-tenths of a second lead on Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Gordon, third, four seconds back. Dale Jarrett, 5.8 seconds off the lead. Then Ricky Rudd and Todd Bodine here in Texas. We just move that bun cake and a couple more macaroons. I think we can ship that package to the suburbs. Good. Here's another one. Good. <sighs> Cookie? Your small business should need its own small business to pay for shipping. For tools to help avoid unexpected surcharges, manage your bottom line, and meet customer demand, check out USPS.com. There's a new star rising. The fans are raving. This one's going to be legendary. When you're the next big thing, everybody wants you. Even Kobe Bryant. Introducing the next big thing from McDonald's. It's the Big and Tasty. Nice shot. We love Racing presented by the Home Depot on Fox is brought to you by the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR.
we continue under the green flag? And no, we don't. Caution is just wave. Piece of debris down there to the inside of the corner. And a turn one. I believe that's a catch can from a car that had just made a pit stop. Here's the battle back to the flag to see who gets a lap back from Steve Park. And a bunch of them do. Looked like a catch can. Down there it is. In the bottom of your screen down in turn one. Right next to the pit road. That 96 car just come out of the pit. So I think that, yeah, here you go. Had to be him. Oops. Oops. Gone with the catch can. There That's when is. you don't know if they're saying go, 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 or <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> in any case, the caution is out once again here in Texas in a race that on long runs, Dale Jarrett has done well, and on fairly short and medium runs, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Steve Park have been at the front. Park's car looks to me like it's got the best of both worlds. It's not that bad on the, on the restarts, and it gets better the, the longer it runs. So I think he's got the best of both worlds. Now, Junior's car has been real good taking off on the restarts, but the longer we run, that car just seems to go away, Larry. And what we got to remember, you talked about it, is these two cars are set up differently. Even though they're running one, two up there at the front of the pack, they are set up differently. It looks like Steve Park's setup is a little bit better, and Pit Road's going to be busy here. Pace car leads them around. Pit Road should be open this time, and here come the lead lap cars. Of course, Junior should have a good, you know, big advantage here because he's in that first pit box down there. So with a good stop, he should get out with the lead. Jeannie? Well, guys, it should be a full maintenance pit stop for the 66 car of Todd Bodine because they're having some problems. They say the car is pushing. It's been pushing a little bit worse each time. He's afraid it's the tires. He also made some contact with the wall. So that right front fender, they're going to check that out as well. May cost them some time here in the pits, but they say it's worth it. Steve Park is just a little bit tight. Jeannie's going to take a half a pound out of the right front. They made a chassis adjustment. One turn down on the right rear. Left side tires on. Let's go to Matt Yoko. And the car is down and away. Tony Uri Jr. And the guys. Good stop for Dale Earnhardt Jr. He was complaining about his car. Was still tight. Arrow push off a of two, but very good in three and four. They made a slight air pressure adjustment to Dick Bergeron. Uh, Jeff Gordon also had a nice stop. They were concerned about the possibility that the 96 car was going to be pitted in front of them for the penalty. That didn't happen. They had a nice, clean, clear pit stop, and Gordon is back on the speedway with four fresh tires, and they are still trying to take the push out of that race car. Mike? Fifteen cars remain on the lead lap here in Texas at lap 189. The real winner on the pit stop, Rusty Wallace, in the two car, he come in tenth, went out third. One advantage he's got because of a poor qualifying effort on Friday. He's way down at the entrance of pit road, but he has Bill Elliott on one side of him in the pits. Joe Nemechek, another side, they're a lap down. He had a free pit entrance there on his box. Makes Plus it, a good pit stop. Yeah, a good pit stop, but that really helps you to get in and get out. So here come the cars a lap down or more into the pits. Here's the exit. You see Wallace steaming along here. There's Rusty way back here. There's the line right there. That's what they got to go. Dale Jarrett right there. But you see Dale Earnhardt Jr. by virtue of sitting on the pole, getting that number one pit selection. He beats these guys out. All he has to do is move about five feet. And that was a four-tire change yeah, for Wallace. He ain't so going to take work. those two tires anymore, I don't believe. So after pit stop, Dale Earnhardt Jr. back to the front here in Texas. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. Get inside the official gear of NASCAR. Apparel, collectibles, and more. Only at NASCAR.com. America Online keyword, NASCAR. Turn your passion into a profession with a career in restaurant management. At the New York Restaurant School, we'll give you the theory as well as the practical, hands-on training managers need to succeed in the thriving food service industry, from kitchen operation to front of the house. Flexible class schedules are available five days a week. To get started, call the New York Restaurant School now at 1-800-556-8215. That's 1-800-556-8215. Remember that feeling? Kind of like when you first got the internet. 
But lately, does it feel a bit constraining? Chances are, slow logons and disconnects are really, well, holding you back. Free yourself with the AT&T 7-7 offer and get unlimited internet access and long distance together. Only $7 a month gives you AT&T WorldNet service with the fastest logon times and better, more reliable connections and seven cents a minute long distance all day, every day. Both for less than half of what you're probably paying right now. So call 1-800-223-9000 for seven cents a minute long distance and unlimited AT&T WorldNet service for just $7 a month. The AT&T 7-7 offer. The future is what you make of it. Watch Seinfeld at 11 p.m. starting tomorrow, only on Park 5. 191 laps complete as you watch from the Budweiser blimp. We're about to get the green flag. You see the pace car peel away in turn four and head for pit road. Dale Earnhardt Jr. about to restart the Harris 500. Green flag. We're back racing at Texas. Three wide into turn one, back behind the leaders, and it was Kurt Busch kicked up high there on the restart. Junior wastes no time in jumping out from this field. Well, he knows his car's not being good on the long runs. On a short run, when he's good, he needs to put as much distance on these guys as he can. Plus, if he's tight, he got a little arrow push. He don't want to get behind anybody. So I think this is a good move for him. Let's show you what happened to Kurt Busch. The here he is car. back in here. Now that's a pass to the right, and you can do that. The green flag is out, even though he isn't at the start finish line, except at the start of the race. They have a designated area. When the green flag's out, you can go, but you have to go to the right. And you can see now he did not gain a position when it sorted back out. He had to drop back in line about where he was. Well, normally the guys you pass on the right like that don't appreciate it. And they don't <laughs> cut you a lot of slack when you right. get down to turn one. And he is a rookie after all. They did not cut him any. One thing I figured out, I know why people always ask us, what do we do in the cars if we got to go to the bathroom? Well, folks, I can tell you, up here in the booth, you have to go to the bathroom a lot. Out there in the car, you never have to go. But I never drank four cups of coffee and three bottles of water either. <laughs> Just keep tugging on that steering wheel, Daryl. That's it. We'll be all right. Here's Kevin Harvick, yesterday's winner in the 300-mile Bush Series race. Seventh place. Every time a caution flag comes out and these guys that are back in the pack can get in the, into the pits and make adjustments on their cars, somebody's going to spring out of there with a change that's going to put them to the front. Maybe they take a spring rubber out. Maybe they put one in, track bar adjustment, wedge adjustment, air adjustment, but they get a chance to work on their car and that can improve their performance dramatically. Rusty Wallace there in front of Steve Park up to fourth spot and look at his pit stops each time, every time he's come out of the pits in a better position than he went in. Right behind. You know, last week at Bristol, they kept having problems on pit stops and that graphic was like reverse. But this week, these guys have made a difference. Here at Texas, it's so much easier to pass them on pit road than on the racetrack. Looks like Rookie, Ricky Rudd, our 28 car, he had a little bit of trouble right there. Oh, he went down into turn one and the thing just took off on him. I mean, up the track it went. Did a good job of hanging on to her because she was headed for the for the wall. Ricky now in the seventh position in the 28th car. Settles in there behind Harvick. Car looks okay now. Back up to speed. Yeah, I think he just he either drove in too hard or he may have been uh, maybe got a little help. I don't know, but he was up to track. In your mind. Let's see what happened to him because I, I looked over there and he was long gone. Here we go, side by side, going down into turn one, 192 mile an hour. Sorry about that. Bad timing. Guys, you don't want to be doing that going into no. turn one at 192 miles an hour. And not only that, you damaged that very critical left front fender. And now look what's happens to Rudd as he loses his momentum. Harvick also gets past him there. He saw an opportunity and he took advantage of it. Johnny Benson and Todd Bodine battling. Battle for the eighth position. Yeah, and we haven't said a lot about Benson, but you know, he had the best car here in happy hour. And uh, on the long runs particularly, I think he's slowly just kind of been pacing himself, working his way to the front. Looks 
surprise no one if either of these two drivers won a race this year. Oh, no. This guy is way, way overdue. Maybe in Martinsville. The slowest, shortest track we go to now. Slowest. Don't get the idea that they just kind of ride around, folks. On a little half-mile racetrack with drag strip straightaways, they're running for all they're worth, and they're breaking for all they're worth. It's a great show. When we talk about bull rings, we're going to the next little short track. That's a bull ring, and we're going there, and we're going to try to ride these bad boys all the way around there. If they won't get out of your way, you knock them out of the way. That's right. You need a great big plow on the front and a big old bar in the back for a bumper. Dick Bergman, what's going on with Johnny Benson? Well, as fast as he was at that happy hour session yesterday, Larry, this morning they changed the car all around. Two different shocks, two different springs, different sway bar, different track bar. It's a new race car, and they are just bound to determine they're going to win one of these things, so they rolled the dice, stuck their necks out to try to get better. Well, that 97 car and that 66 car back there are really going at it. Side by side off the corner, right behind Beth, here he comes. These yep. two guys are really having a wage and a war here. They're Sterling right in there with them. Now, I'm baffled. You have the fastest car in the last practice, and you change everything? Oh, it's, it's like a basketball coach, you know. Oh, they're going to catch up with us. We better start doing something different. Whoa! Boy, Todd Bodine and Kurt Busch I'm touched there. You. These two guys are just working on each other. Sterling Marlin in that 40 car, what we got to remember, he started back in 37th position, has worked his way battling right here, Todd Bodine, for the 10th position. Well, Mike, to pick up a little bit, when you come out here this morning, you look at the weather, and you see what the weather's going to be like versus what you were like in happy hour. Then you know there was a 300-mile bush race. So based on what you know about your car, you can make some very intelligent changes that are the right thing to do. Now, the real thing we pay attention to, you talk about track conditions. Yeah, we look at the air temperature, especially the motor guys, but here's the key. We started this race 84 degrees. The clouds have been out, continues to cool that racetrack down. 79 degrees. The cars need to get more grip, but they tend to want to be tighter. They don't want to turn as good. But track temperature cooling down could help this man right here, Dale Earnhardt Jr. If his car's loose, it could tighten it up. Well, I think what's happened is, here's Rusty and uh, Park racing side by side. I think what's happened is, is we're back like we started. Junior leading, Jarrett chasing him down. I think Jarrett made a bad change on his car the last time in the pits. They've corrected it this time, and now he's right back up there fighting for the lead again. So Steve Park moves up to fourth, and Dale Jarrett is starting to close on the leader. Here's Elliot Sadler moving up. Was that three wide? At least three wide. One of those cars, a little bit slow. That was Michael Waltrip. I think Mikey just barely keeping up to minimum yep. speed. He spun into the wall on lap four to bring out the race's first caution flag. And what NASCAR does, they, they clock cars that are running slow. They have a certain time that you have to maintain. They only give you one chance to maintain that speed. If you feel like you're not fast enough to oh, get trouble, trouble off turn two. Big trouble. Two cars in the wall. Two more pile up. One of those is Ward Burton. Jeremy Mayfield got in the back of Ward Burton and knocked him right up in the middle of that mess. Casey Atwood, Casey the 19 Atwood. car on the inside wall there. Ward Burton. Here's Ward down here. Casey up here. And I'm not sure who this is over Joe here. Joe Nemechek in Nemechek. the 33 car. Ward got booted. He was trying to slow down and got booted from behind. Casey yep. Atwood in the 19. See if we can get an overhead here and see what happened, Larry. Love these overheads. Usually you can get a real good idea about what happened. This is off turn two. Oh, Casey, Casey kind of moved over in front of Joe and they got together. Sliding down the racetrack, here comes Ward Burton. He gets hit by Jeremy Mayfield in the 12 car. Ooh. Jeremy just misses Casey Atwood, but Ward Burton gets spun around, hits the outside wall. Stay with this just a little bit longer, and you'll see another car comes flying through here, just about gets into Joe. Mark Barton and Kevin LePage just snuck through there. Oh, you see, Casey got loose. Casey got loose back in the middle of the corner, and when he corrected it, Joe was on the outside of him, and he swung into, this, into Joe Nemechek's car. A lot of new camera angles that Fox has brought to NASCAR, giving you some of these replay views. See, watch Casey's car. It's, he's coming off that corner. It gets through. See the back end come out? Now watch him. He corrects it, and when he does it, takes him up the track, and Joe Nemechek's there, and they collide. Ward Burton, he yeah. sees what's happening, but Jeremy Mayfield don't, and goes right in the back of Ward Burton in the 22 car. There's Mark slipping through. And there's LePage in the four car. Casey is okay, looking over his Everham Dodge. 
When you come off of turn two on the bottom over there, the longer this race goes on, the slicker that gets and the harder it is to get off of that corner. Now this car, that 22 car, we've seen it with damage like that on it already this week. So uh, it didn't really slow him down that much earlier in the week. We'll see what it does today. Jeannie? Well, guys, a big debate going on in the two pit. Of course, Brandon Thomas taking over crew chief duties for Robin Pemberton. Four tires, two tires. What do you think? Well, the final verdict was out. What the heck? Let's get four tires in there. And their last pit stop, which wasn't that long ago, they made a track bar adjustment. So, so far, so good. Of course, going to put in some fuel as well because they have the time. Steve? GD, right side tires only for Dale Jarrett. He did make a chest. He adjusted one round of the left rear Sterling Marlin coming out as well. Go to a lot of discussion of a gas and go, two tires or four. They were going to do two, then Dale Earnhardt Jr. Oh. fingers out the window saying four, four, and he's down and away. No adjustments on the eight car. I think a lot of cars took two tires in. I think definitely Sterling Marlin did. Uh, I'm not sure about some of these other cars, maybe the 66, but we were just in the pits a few laps ago. So two tires right now for track position makes all the sense in the world. You'd say, Rusty Wallace, why'd he take four this time? He's got his track position. He's fought his way back up there where he wants to be. Now he needs four tires. We had run 14 laps, which was, which was a lot less laps than when Rusty and Johnny Benson did it earlier. Sterling Marlin come in 10th. He's going to inherit the lead. And now he has led in all seven races of the 2001 season. 208 laps complete. Fifth caution of the day. Let's ride with Tony Stewart through the accident scene. And we'll be right back to Texas Motor Speedway after this. Celebrating by Team Monte Carlo. Now the first thing you've got to do oh. is jump up here oh. and scream and yell, Woo! Make sure your hat guy forms him first uh -huh. so you don't end up looking like a dork. Now when somebody hands you one of these babies, oh. make sure you say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, man. Don't eat the check. Want to be like Jeff Gordon? Drive the Chevy Monte Carlo. The cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there. I'll tell you what, on race day, you better get it right. He, you want a hands-on boss. Yeah. He's Terry LeBond. Terry, Terry, Terry LeBond. Check the transmission and the drive shaft. We'll He's, He's involved. involved in every detail. Right, absolutely. Hey, if that makes me a perfectionist, one more pound. So what? There's a fingerprint on the windshield. Got it. Got it. Hey, I'm here to win. Blue. The nose needs to be bluer. <laughs> Blue's good. Yeah, Blue. very, Blue's great. Very good. Hey, Dad, what's that? That's a pink flamingo. What's that? Bullfrog. What's that? That son is a Chevy Monte Carlo. If you want to see 700 horses under a hood, spend a day by the lake on the famous Daytona infield, but bring your Visa card, because you won't get in with American Express. Isn't nature great? Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot on Fox, is brought to you by Team Monte Carlo, the cars more champions depend on. Chevy will be there. Welcome back live to Texas Motor Speedway. Fox Racing continues next weekend, qualifying on Friday from Martinsville, Virginia, 3 Eastern, 12 Pacific, and then Saturday, they call it a happy hour. It's more like rush hour. It's sometimes an unhappy hour as they get their final tune-up for Sunday's race. That's at noon Eastern time on Fox Sports Net. And the NASCAR this morning on the net at 10 Eastern Sunday gets you cranked up early. The pre-race show at 12.30 Eastern from Martinsville. Mark Martin, your defending champ, and then the race follows on Fox and all is wrapped up on NASCAR Victory Lane at Fox Sports Net. As we get a look at the uh, Kodiak Dodge. Yeah, you can see right there they've got the... Uh, Wedge wrench in. Actually, since the track bar right there, they stuck it in there, and somebody didn't get it out. Watch him; he's going to come. Yeah, you actually raised it up, to probably free the car up a little, make it turn better in the middle of the corner. Usually, when we bring up the audio, we we crank it up. I think they mistook <laughs> what our what we usually do for our listeners and viewers. Make sure everybody don't get misinformed. That's not where we wind these race cars up to make them run. Yeah, as I pointed out earlier by uh, Larry McReynolds, uh, Sterling Marlin now has led at least a lap in each of the seven races so far this year, but he has yet to come up with a victory. And there is a Sterling Marlin. It is Coors Light Dodge. We'll be back from the Texas Motor Speedway. Marlin, your leader at the moment, followed by Dale Jarrett and Jeff Gordon. A lot more racing to come. Don't go away.
Friday, April 27th at a theater near you. The sleek 200 horsepower Chevy Monte Carlo SS. <laughs> Green. The side you show the world is up to you. Hey, check it out. A totally twisted way to eat pizza. Yeah, new twisted crust pizza from Pizza Hut. It's breadsticks. No, it's pizza. It's both. Look, go directly to the twisted crust and tear off a breadstick. Dude, what planet are you from? You eat your pizza first and you save your breadsticks till the end. No, it's breadsticks first and the free marinara or ranch dipping sauce, then pizza. You're twisted. Pizza first. The new twisted crust pizza from Pizza Hut. Breadsticks and pizza together at last. I got one word for you. Breadsticks. That's two words, Brainiac. Another one of the best pizzas under one roof. leader Sterling Marlin and Dave Blaney does likewise here comes Jarrett under Marlin for the lead most of these cars up near the front right here they only took two tires and I don't know crew chief I'm always under the opinion that if you got a caution flag you ought to put four tires on. well this late in the race and in yeah the top six cars Sterling Marlin Dale Jarrett Trouble Trouble two. Andy Trouble. Houston goes around here get up the field gonna get ugly Everybody gets by. Caution is out. Ken There's Schrader a... trying to get his lap back. Dave Blaney in the 93. Two cars going to get their lap back. Schrader in the 36. Blaney in the 93. Four cars. And Bill Elliott. Four cars get their lap back. Andy Houston crashing off turn two to bring out the race's sixth caution flag. And, and the reason that guys let people get their lap back is so they don't have to race them on the inside when they start to race back. It's over in turn two. They get three wide. Uh, they, he bobbled, see? Same thing yeah, that happened bobbled. to Casey Atwood a while yeah. ago. It, it got just loose over there in turn two. There's a little patch over there, a little slick place right over there, I can recall. And, boy, if you hit it just right, that back end will hop out money. In. And at the same time, you've got a car there on your rear bumper that's taking air off your rear spoiler. That don't help matters any. No, and he, everybody did a really great job and he kept that car up against that wall otherwise this could have been ugly now after houston got loose he might have after that had a little contact from steve park that might have been up the nose on park's car yeah uh, that that was kind of like a reaction to the reaction right. johnny benson drives through it now lean on board camera showing you these pictures 96 was a little cranky anyway remember Now it's a little pushed in on the left rear corner. So quickly, the caution is back out again here in Texas. We'll be right back. You're watching NASCAR on Fox. No matter what your business, if you need to move it, clean it, cater it, build it up, or tear it down, you can use Labor Ready Temporary Labor. Just call 1-800-24-LABOR or order online at laborready.com and you'll get all the help you need. You can find good help these days. Labor Ready. Dependable Temporary Labor. Check this out. Bob here needs a car. Oh. Uh, how about a pickup? A black one with a place for my bike. Autotrader.com. Over a million and a half used cars make it the biggest, best used car site on the planet. You need a loan? Oh, yeah. Autotrader.com. Your car is waiting. Hey, girl. Want it to register? She takes me. Mm-hmm. No, check it out. She gave me this frozen coat for free. A Whopper says... 
free food tastes a lot like love. Buy a Whopper and get your choice. Cheese and bacon topping, Hershey pie, or frozen Coke. Free. You do know you're a moron, right? In the land of burgers, the flame boiled Whopper is king. So, uh, what do you say? I'm not driving a truck. <laughs> of course you're not gonna drive a truck. I mean, you'd look like a fool out there racing a truck. We want you to race the package car. It's a truck. Dale, you know, we could sit here all day and play word games, but that's not gonna win us any championships. Death is not the end. But you found him and you don't even know what you got. Only the beginning. Tell me it's true. The X-Files, all new tonight on Fox. Welcome back, Texas Motor Speedway. A little repair as we are under caution. Dale Jarrett, the leader. And, you know, I work next to Jeff Hammett here in the Hollywood Hotel. He hangs out in the garage all the time. Jeff, you are starting to look like a piece of equipment. And you take off your cowboy hat. And you really are a gearhead. Well, Chris, I told you, I really kind of put myself into my work. And somebody's got to be the spark plug around this place. Yeah, well, we need more makeup. Uh, happy oh, come on, man. Give me a break. I kid because I care. You know that. All right. Uh, happy April Fool's. Uh, let's go back up. we you, we got to get him makeup and a hat or something. Jeff, you look marvelous, darling. <laughs> thank you very a much, lot Daryl. looking in the hat, i got to tell you. Yeah, thank you very much, I'm telling you. I've, I've seen that face in the pits a number of times. <laughs> <laughs> Love you mean it, boys. Love you mean it. I thought he was all hat and no cattle. I guess ah, I was that's wrong. the rumor. That's the rumor. <laughs> Let's get restarted here to begin lap 218 of 334. Dale Jarrett brings them down for the restart with Jeff Gordon, Sterling Marlin, Steve Park, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Jeff Burton in that 99 car, he wants his lap back. We keep seeing cars get lap back, but Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett, they're going to go by him here in turn one. They're going to have to stoke that old 99 up a little bit more before he get a lap back, unless there's something here happening, slow down, get one back. All right, Casey Atwood was involved in the lap 206 crash. Jeannie's with him. Yes, Mike. Uh, the good news is that Casey is okay. The bad news is this is not an April Fool's joke. You're out of it for a stretch here, and as you walked over here upset, you're telling me the worst part here is this is your first Winston Cup wreck. Yeah, I've been in quite a few races now, and this is my first track, so kind of heartbroken about that, but we've been tight all day, and, and getting loose is the last thing I thought was going to happen, and got inside the 92, and got a little loose, and I, I thought I had it saved, and it looked like we got hit from behind again and got turned around, but uh, just a bad day for us. We, thought we got behind early, I thought we was going to come back and get a top 20, and uh, it's not going to be today. The rookie, of course, with high hopes, maybe expecting a top 10 finish here. Tough day for Atwood as Dale Jarrett leads Jeff Gordon. When we talk about the cars being loose, uh, you go down in the corner, you're trying to turn the car, you want to turn left. Obviously, you got a left-hand turn. But when the car's loose, it'll come around here, it'll come around, and all of a sudden, the back end will snap around on you. And watch your hands, watch your hands. Left, left, whoa, I'm out of here. And that's when you're way, way, way too loose. See why? Look at Rusty. Now that is the perfect hand location. Down in the corner, pulling on the thing just a little bit to the left. Lovely scenery Outside. going by over on your left you. side. Down into that turn, not biting that wheel. Outside. Nice and smooth and Side leading the event. Doesn't get any better than that. Rusty not racing Jeff Burton for position. Burton's Outside. 99 is one They're left outside. down. Kevin Harvick right there in that white 29 car. He just passed Rusty Wallace and Matt Kenseth on the last lap. He's now running in the seventh position. Or right around the bottom of the racetrack, turn one and two. Up front, Steve Park getting by lap traffic, and now he has chased down the leader. And what we got to remember, Steve Park is one of the few cars while ago, especially compared to Jeff Gordon and Dale Jarrett, they got four tires versus two as he takes the second position from Jeff Gordon. I'm going to get me them four tires when that caution flag comes out. Now, I've talked to you about two up under the green for uh, maybe trying to get to the end or something, but man, you got four tires. You got a crew in there can put them on in 14 seconds. Give me four tires and fill me up with fuel because I might be out here for a while. Let's get some updates on repairs on pit road. First from Steve. 
Mike, Ricky Rudd made contact with the 17 car of Matt Kenseth, and they're fabricating a piece here just in case they have to bring him in. He has damage to that right front corner, and you're looking not only at the fabricated piece, but the nose piece that's extra. They're trying to form it to fit exactly should they need to bring him in. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Well, you might think a guy named Houston could have a great day in a place called Texas, but right now Andy Houston is having anything but a fun day. The damage to the back end of his race car is significant. They had a lot of trouble trying to clear out the fuel area so they could put fuel in it. They still haven't got fuel in it. They're having to tape the trunk down on the car because it's all broken loose. And while all this is going on, Andy Houston, who early on was running in the top ten, is going more and more laps down. Mike? Steve Park catching the leader and Dale Earnhardt Jr. catching Jeff Gordon for third. Another one of the cars. Dale Earnhardt Jr. got four tires while ago. We remind you, Jeff Gordon got two tires as they go underneath Jeremy Mayfield. It was involved in that wreck while ago on the back stretch. Funny how we just swapped back and forth. The eight led a while, then they pitted, and the 88 led a while, and then they pitted, and then the one led a while, and they pitted, and here we are back to that very similar scenario. And that's why the 147,000 seats here are still all filled. Nobody leaves in the sixth inning of a Winston Cup race. There is no sixth inning. <laughs> <laughs> here comes Earnhardt Jr., and the fans go wild. I mean, they stand up there cheering. They know this kid is on a mission. by Jeff Gordon and just drove off and left him. But the fastest man on the racetrack that last lap was Steve Park. He has halved the distance between himself and Dale Jarrett. Look at those four tires through the middle of that corner. Picks up that throttle about two car lengths before Dale Jarrett pulls up on him here down the front stretch. It won't be but about a couple of laps. He'll have this lead. Plus, he's getting a little help. He's getting a little draft help as he catches up to the back of the 88 car. Fox Track showing you the intervals instantaneously as Park catches Jarrett and Earnhardt Jr. tries to move in. And I don't think that uh, Jarrett will put up much of a fight right now. He knows Park's got four tires. He'll probably let him drive right on by. Picked up three tenths of a second from the middle of turn one and two down the back stretch. Well, we're getting at a point in this race now where you got to start showing a little bit. You can't be holding back much. Here you see the top three cars right there. Now the second. There's the top three cars. This is the intervals now. Dale Jarrett, Steve Park, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Park now looking for the lead. And he's going to have it as they come off the four. He's going to cut it down under him. Eh, a little steam in that 88 down the straightaway. Park's running a little bit higher line than, uh, than he had been, trying to get a run off that corner to get up out of there with some momentum. That's his spotter talking to him, Dale Jarrett, and uh, he's done him nice and smooth. Heard a similar conversation at Darlington a few weeks ago. Take care of them four eagles. That's Bob Jeffrey, who's his spotter, been spotting for him for a long time. Let's go back to Sterling Marlin and Ricky Rudd. This is the race for fifth place. We've talked a lot about parity this year, but there's only two Dodges on the lead lap right now. That's Marlin and Blaney, and only one Pontiac, Benson. Neither of those two makes have yet won this year. There's a good number of the Dodges. There's 10 of those, but the Pontiacs, not that many of them, so their odds are not all that great. Check that. Ken Schrader got back on the lead lap, so that's two Pontiacs. Two Dodges out of 19 lead lap cars. The rest are Chevys and Fords. And there's one of each. Jarrett and Park. Now this time, in this run, Darrell, Steve Park's been not so anxious to go after Dale Jarrett for the lead. Well, it, you know, it's, it's one thing to catch these cars. You hear the drivers talk about it all the time, but when you get up behind all somebody, clear. takes all the clear. air off your nose, you pick up that arrow push. This track is notorious for being tight off, push off. It keeps you from getting that run you need to pass down the straightaway. Could Steve Park right now be conserving his tires in case this is a long run? I don't think so. I think it's I think it's showtime myself. I think you got to get out there and get you a lead if you can and, and begin to prepare for that final pit stop. You know why I say that? Because Jeff Gordon is lurking right along with these guys. 
and he knows that as well as I do. Jeff Gordon there in the fourth place, 24 car. It's funny how some of these guys will just kind of ride along, ride along, ride along, but when it gets down near uh, the money laps, they start to get real serious, and all of a sudden they separate themselves from everybody else. Dave Blaney, since he got back on the lead lap at the last caution, he has been flying. He's back in the top ten. Well, that's a fast car. We know that. Uh, saw that at Atlanta. This track is so, so similar to Atlanta. And I expected him to be up there better than he really is. From last place to the top ten. After being a lap down and, and getting that lap back on a caution. continues to shadow Dale Jarrett. 100 laps to go. Here he comes. He's got, well, he's going to get him on the outside. He's got room. He's there. Outside. And Steve Parks, the new leader. All clear. And that may be the first pass we've seen for the leader for any really significant positions on the outside. So that outside group is working. Steve Park looking for his second win of 2001 with just shy of 100 laps left in this cattle drive in Texas. Who makes the best minivan? The only power rear hatch with cargo organizer. Check. The only movable removable center console. Check. Most powerful engine available. Check. The only three zone automatic temperature control. Check. Dodge Grand Caravan. The best minivan ever. Check it out. We invite you to see, compare, and drive Caravan. Now with low 0.9 financing. You ready, guys? This could be the ride of your life. You gotta get past the myths. And the excuses. Erectile difficulty is a common problem. Effective treatment is available. Talk to your doctor. You might be surprised how easily you can get through it. digitally record up to 35 hours of programming. No tapes. Ultimate TV. Watch what you can do. You know what they say about oysters. The same is true about tires. Enhance your performance at Pep Boys, where 35,000 mile tires are just four for $99, or 70,000 mile Futuras, four for $179. Fall in love with your car again at Pep Boys. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing, presented by the Home Depot on Fox, is brought to you by the Home Depot, the official home improvement warehouse of NASCAR. By Dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different. By UPS, moving at the speed of business. And by Miller Lite. Grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. 240 laps complete here in Texas. Steve Park and Dale Jarrett among the Coke family of drivers running 1-2. Just under 100 laps to go here in Texas, and that will mean one more pit stop. One more pit stop. I've already been running this pencil, running this calculator. What we got to remember, all the leaders was on pit road around lap 206 for that caution. That's 128 laps to go. We saw an opening in the show, pit window, somewhere between 60, 65 laps. Jeff Hammond, not a lot of uh, strategy there, what you got to do. Biggest thing right there, Larry, is you know, is he be able to get that driver to get down on pit road, don't speed down pit road, and make darn sure that you get on and off pit road as quick as possible. You guys don't make any mistakes. Don't beat yourself. Here we go again talking about don't beat yourself. You're Steve Park, you got to lead. Don't give it up by doing something stupid. And what we've got to do, we're going to see about everybody on pit road around lap 270. The thing I'm interested in is who's going to pull the trigger first. If I'm the leader, I'd like for that second place man to dive on pit road and then follow him. Well, let's check on pit road with one of those lead cars. Here's Dick. 
And I'm with Robbie Loomis. Robbie, what is your strategy from here for Jeff Gordon? Well, right now, you know, we're probably looking to stop him one more time in about 25, 30 laps. We really, you know, if it goes green, uh, that's about all we got left to do. We need to get that car a little bit better right now. It's still a little too tight. Two tires or four? Uh, we'll have to think about that. We'll probably have to get four on this thing. Okay, the Matt Yoakum. Tony Urie Sr. prepared the car that went to victory lane here one year ago. Tony, when will you make your last stop? Uh, probably around lap 273. Uh, I think we can run a lot further. Most of the guys will probably make stop when we stop with them. It's probably a little early. I lost a little time while ago. Stayed out. Let uh, the track Let's go up the road to Steve Burns. Matt, Matt with Paul Andrews. Paul, tell us about your strategy if we have just one more stop. Well, there's really not a whole lot we can do. The car is pretty good right now. We've been trying to get it freed up. We've got a little too tight there right in the middle. We'll just see how we are at the end of this run. If we need to speed up again, we will. Uh, right now, we just need one more stop. Mike Clary, that eight car, you know, remember early in the race, he stayed out longer than anybody else. And so he's going to be able to go a few extra laps, looks to me like, uh, on fuel and tires. Now here's the DuPont team, Jeff Gordon's team, having that team meeting. Jeff Hammond talked about it, talking about that final critical pit stop, should it stay green. Now somebody told a joke as they broke up there, but they know <laughs> what they got to do on that last pit stop. And at 180 miles an hour, that can mean the difference. Dave Blaney continues to knife through this field. Here he works underneath Rusty Wallace. And this will move Blaney, the former World of Outlaws champion, up into eighth place. Big difference in the attitude of those two cars as they exited the corner. The two car kind of reared up on the left front, and that 93 car, Blaney, that thing is sucked down to the earth. I like this. I like the way it looks. Let's look at the provisional starters and where they are right now. Sterling Marlins gained 32 spots. Dave Blaney's gained 35 positions since the drop of the green flag today. This track is real sensitive when they go out to qualify. Some of those cars that are back there, they went out early. They got to the car, the track wasn't good, and they got bad qualifying runs, and then a couple of them got into some of that fluid that was put out and messed up their qualifying runs. So we was expecting to see these guys move through the field, and they are. Riding there with Bill Elliott, who's gained 19 positions since the green flag. And Bill got a lap back at last caution flag there, and that uh, really helped him. Johnny Benson just ahead as they move past John Andretti. Bill Elliott down into turn one right here. Soft touch that brake just a little bit. Back on that throttle. Coming off the corner here. Wide open, wide open, wide open throttle. Right there on the exit of the corner. Comes off the corner about 170 miles an hour. Down the back stretch. Straightway is short, isn't it? <laughs> At 190 miles an hour, it's short. And you mentioned it earlier. It's what makes a gear selection so tough here. You need a lot lower gear for the back stretch because it's so short, but it would put you turning way too many RPMs on the front stretch here. Yeah, what you got to watch for late in the race is engine failures because they have been working hard today. All right, it's seven tenths of a second from Steve Park to Dale Jarrett. Let's see what happens to that lead margin when we come back to Texas Motor Speedway. 250 laps complete on Fox. Grandstands and infields. Pistons and thunder. Muscles and speed. Men and machines. Speedways and octane. Scanners and pit stops, checkered flags and championships, trophies and beer. Start your engines, baby. I'm a race fan. Ever thought about what could happen in three short days? You could fall in love. You could, with appliances that are eager to please and know their way around the kitchen. We'll fix you up at the Sears 72-hour sale. It's your chance to get 0% financing through August 2001 on all appliances over $399 and live, well, happily ever after. And hurry, with this much going for them, they won't be available forever. The 72-hour sale at Sears. The good life at a great price, guaranteed. You remember Jared from Subway? Turns out, he's inspired a lot of people. He's still looking good to show you the way. His name is Jared, and he'll lead you to Subway. That's where it goes. 
Subway, eat fresh. For nearly half a century, one event in NASCAR has separated champions from all the rest. NASCAR's most challenging event, the Coca-Cola 600. A limited number of excellent feats are still available. So call today and be a part of an American classic. This May, make Charlotte your ultimate race vacation destination. Lead into the big race with a week-long festival. Tour all the NASCAR race shops and enjoy other exciting events at Lowe's Motor Speedway. We can even help you find a hotel room. Call 1-800-455-FANS today. Entertainment Weekly calls Jessica Alba sci-fi's siren for the next generation. So you want to be my next victim? Dark Angel at 9, 8 Central, Fox Tuesday. 254 laps complete here at Texas Motor Speedway. There's Steve Park Chevrolet looking for its second win of the year. Dale Jarrett's Ford in second. One second back and Dale Earnhardt Jr. in third. As you look at them roar around Texas Motor Speedway, the condos on the left, the Speedway Club at the top of your screen as you watch this great view from the Budweiser.com airship. Look at that. At the infield. I mean, there's not a space. There's not any earth. It's all cars. Bruton, campers. Bruton knows how to pack a house. Man, he does. And look at those grandstands. Holy cow. And somewhere there is our car we've got to get out later <laughs> on this afternoon or later on this week. Uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, that's when the real race begins, folks, after we get off the air. That's incredible. Okay. Now, Terry, a lot, it's a lot of Fox folks here. Terry Bradshaw's next door enjoying Bruton's hospitality in the suite. Yeah, that and noise you hear every once in a while, that's Bradshaw over here beating oh. on the windows. He wants in here. We got it. It's all we can do to keep him out. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Jeannie has run into one of Fox's primetime stars, Christopher Titus, down along the pit road. Titus high performance car did not qualify for today's race or any other for that matter, but Christopher Titus hanging around here. Big I racing fan. Know. Big racing fan. That's part of being huge. on the track. We can't hear each other. Yeah, huge racing fan. Huge racing fan. Just, just we were standing by the by the four turn where Hornaday just spun and I got I gotta say it doesn't look like it's really easy to get a car back in shape at 180. Um, I said it's amazing. Uh, NASCAR racing, just in general, I've been watching my whole life. And, you know, my dad and I fight all week, but on Sunday we both sat on the couch, and all the fighting stopped until after the race. And then we'd fight about whose fault the wreck we saw was. So, uh, yeah, I, I love it here. It's amazing. Of course, you're the honorary grand marshal, and that means you have to count every single lap, so I'll let you go. All right, thank you. Trouble for Ricky Rudd. Like I said, with 50 laps or so to go, start watching for engine failures. This joint is hard on the valve train, hard on everything. Rudd off the pace and going to lift it around the pit road here, it appears. Yeah, he had a good bit of smoke coming out the exhaust, so I'm thinking he may be uh, bringing her to the garage. He's been on a lead lap all day and spent a lot of time today in the top five. No, Ricky's going to stay on the racetrack. And he is receiving the black flag from NASCAR for all that smoke. Well, yeah. they want to make sure he's not putting any oil down. You know, they suspect that they're going to send him to the pits where the inspector in the pits can at least check it out. Where there's smoke, there's usually trouble. Steve? Mike, I was just listening to Michael McSwain, the crew chief, on the radio for Ricky Rudd. They're going to bring him in, raise the hood, and take a look at it. They don't know exactly what's wrong, but they are going to bring him in and raise the hood. Well, that's the first step in the process. To satisfy NASCAR, you got to bring the car in. Look, be sure it's not losing any fluid. If it isn't, then it'll still run, and they'll let him go back out. Runs seventh in points. Right, He's been running at the finish in 21 consecutive races ever since the Brickyard last year. And was thrilled with this car. Talked to him yep. last night. He said best you car he had all year. So I'm sure he's very Five, disappointed right now. Four, three, two, Steve. Five. And Mike, the car is smoking heavily as he comes to a stop. They're taking the hood pins out right now. Ricky's sitting in the hood, or in, inside the car, rather. Taking him a long time to get the hood up. They finally do. They're going to put that replacement patch that they fabricated on the right front corner. Michael McSwain and the crew looking or trying to listen to their radio conversation. Steve, what we see that you can't is that right side exhaust bank is puffing smoke just about every rev. And you saw the NASCAR official kneel down there to see if there was any oil coming out. That's the biggest thing. They want to make sure it's not leaking any oil. 
I don't believe I'd be worried about that fender right now because I don't think that's going to be the. I don't think that's going to help them that much. Ricky Rudd losing a lot of time under Green. Here is Steve Park. It's going to be 1.2 seconds back to Dale Jarrett, the second place car. And look at the attitude of that car. I mean, the, the car is perfect. It's going around the racetrack. Valence right down against the track. That's exactly what you want to see a car look like in race trim. Look, it's not rare enough on the left front corner. Just as it exits that corner a little bit. But that thing is really looking good. seconds back to Jarrett and 4.4 seconds back to Dale Jr. And uh, Jr. and Gordon are running right together. It's 11 seconds back to the 40 car. Kenny Schrader. Oh, trouble down here at Turner. One car hard in the wall. Big, big, big wreck. Jimmy Spencer. Man, he hit that hard. Seventh caution of the day at lap 265. Jeremy Mayfield. No, I'm sorry, did not keep from going a lap down. Boy, I can't believe he can even drive that thing. That thing slammed the driver's side hard. And he was involved in that first wreck today in the first caution. Yeah, he was just out there really making laps. You can see the trouble, all this damage here, all this damage back here. Although I have to say the driver's door looks like it's pretty much intact. Spencer. That was a big hit. Yeah, Jimmy was 32nd. He was eight laps down. He was just trying to ride it out. He got he got the car torn up early in the race, and he's been trying to ride it out. One good thing, Darrell, we've seen about these rear ends in the wall is look at all the crumple zone that that car absorbs all that energy when it hits the wall and shrinks up just like that. Oh, that's hard. The car just got loose, come around with him, shot straight up there, that outside wall, hard. He's still driving it to the garage. Yeah, he's coming down pit range. Man, look at that thing. Good thing he was getting low on fuel. They've been out there a while. You can see the fueler neck, Larry. See right in here? See that area right there? That's the filler neck pulled away from the fuel now, cell. That's where you put fuel in it right there. Now, he's got to get out of the way because pit road is open. Spencer wanted to turn into the garage, couldn't get there. He's going out oh. to the grass to get out of the way. Well, right. It's really smart, really smart. Good move. Jeannie? The Dodge of Sterling Marlin has just pulled in. It's been running great all day. No major adjustments, just some tire pressure. He will get four tires here and some gas. So once his crew members can get around the NASCAR officials, they're a bit tangled up. And guys, we have a problem with one of the crew members here. The tire care will update that in a minute. Steve? Jeannie, Steve Park getting service. Right side tires are already on. Left side tires on. They made an air pressure adjustment. Trying to get Steve Park out of the lead. Matt Yoakum. No debate down here in the eighth. Tires, no adjustments for Dale Earnhardt Jr. And there is Jimmy Spencer, who is okay after the hard hit in turn two and uh, going to the grass to get out of the way of cars pitted because his car would not make the left turn into the garage area. Uh oh. It's getting worse, DW. It's yeah. It's not going to make it that many more laps. Ricky Rudd's car going up in smoke. Thank you, need to talk about it. Let's talk about it. Back to pit road, Dick Bergeron. Well, Jeff Gordon came in for what just might be a final pit stop. The first thing they said to him, even before he got out of pit road, was conserve fuel. So you certainly know what's on their mind. They adjusted the track bar. He did a 15.68 pit stop. And he has said all day long, it seems as the day has worn on, the car is getting better and better and better. Look out. The race is coming to an end, and Gordon's got a terrific race car, Mike. There is Jeff Gordon. That's bad news for everybody else. <laughs> He's in fourth place behind Steve Parkdale, Jarrett Dale Earnhardt Jr. Now that the cars a lap or more down are on pit road. We should mention Casey Atwood is back in the race after his crash. They've repaired his car somewhat, and he's out making laps. As you see, the car is a lap or more down on pit road. Now, Rusty this. Wallace had a little trouble getting into his pit. Watch this mess back here. I'm not, I looked down there, and I saw cars everywhere. Here's Sterling Marlin. Oh, here's oh, what got happened. got knocked down there by Dave Blaney. Blaney just turned him right into the side of Sterling's car almost. Now, Rusty's got to back up and go because his pit is in, in front, front of Blaney. In front of Blaney's. He just got turned in there. Let's watch from Rusty's Miller Light Cam. This is like fighting for a little parking place at the mall. Oh, oh man. There's what happened to the tire carrier. Oh, 40. boy. They all get up and look like, where did he come from? Look, there's his hat up here on the windshield. For Pete's sake. I, 
I looked down, I couldn't figure out what was going on. I saw cars everywhere. Watch this. Another look at it. Wow. Man, look at how that... Jeannie, is he okay? Well, guys, this was a rough pit stop. We had two guys limp away, and a Darren Wolf is going around the side here. I think they're going to go give him some medical assistance, even though he says he is okay. You can see they're helping him. Rick Relling as well, walking off. A Darren Wolf, the front tire changer, got caught up with a NASCAR official. You can see they're taking his shoe off, his left shoe off, going to check out that foot and check out that ankle. He says he's okay, guys. He gave me the thumbs up. We'll keep you posted. The other car involved there, Rusty Wallace, came into the pits eighth and is Rusty's now back 17th in. as he's a result. He's back in because of all that. He got some damage in the front, and that's too bad because Rusty was running in the top ten and having a pretty good day. You can see the damage there on the fender, and that was made by a human being, not another <laughs> race car. That's right. Watch now, this. This is an in-car camera. Here he comes. Here he comes. Whoa, Blaney, why are you doing this to me? Can't blow the horn, can't do anything, and those poor guys are just, that's the bravest men on, in racing right there. Those guys that go around those cars and kneel down out there on pit road, change those tires. I've been preaching it for years. I mean, these guys, you, you take football players. They go at each other, but they got football pads on. They got football helmets. These go, guys are going out there, and, and they're going up against 3,400-pound race cars going on their heels. Yeah, and look, they got a cap <laughs> yeah. for protection. 268 laps complete. Final pit stops. Perhaps the final pit stops have been made. We'll have to wait and see. When we come back to Texas, this is NASCAR on Fox. vehicles from Dodge includes one really bad apple. Dodge, coming soon to a racetrack near you. discovers Uncle Eddie's a real ladies' man. Where'd you get these olives? They're delish. Looking good. Grounded for life. All new at 8.30 Fox Wednesday. I couldn't sleep at all last night. and turn in all the night. Hey! Yeah, but you weren't turned over like this poor fella here. Oh, boy, that is... That is a... That's a horrible thing for a driver to, to, to see people coming in his windshield like that and he can't do anything about it. Good thing that steer didn't have horns. Oh. 
Ask me why I drive a race car. I've always said, why would them guys get out there on pit lane bent down beside a car like that? Going right back out there. And you wait till next week. Martinsville's pit road is, I know they've improved it, but here comes all the leaders. What's going on? 40 car, Sterling Marlin, Todd Bodine, 66 car. They're coming back in, repairing the front end, put a little fuel in it, Jeannie. Well, guys, yeah, they're coming back in for fuel this time. Uh, Darren Wolf, the gentleman who was hurt, staying on this side of the wall. Guys, they're actually making him run up and down pit road here to prove that he is healthy. But he wants to come back in, Matt. Jeannie, Tony, Erie Jr. and Sr. have been calculating their fuel mileage to the best of their figuring. They're going to come up one lap short if this race goes green for the duration. They were talking about coming down for a splash and go, but remember, this car does have that arrow push problem, and they are too concerned about being back in the 16th position, trying to fight their way all the way back up. Yuri Sr. thinks there will be one more caution, so this shouldn't be a problem. To Steve. Well, Mike, Steve Allen on the 88 car, the gas man says they're pretty sure they can make it the rest of the way, but then the one crew, they just I just heard Paul Andrews talking to Steve Park, he does not think they can make it the rest of the way. Let's go to Dick Bergeron. Well, fuel is the topic of the day for sure. Robbie Loomis right now talking with his crew members trying to figure out whether they can make it or not. It would be a cliffhanger for anybody. This is about 120 miles. It's more than they can usually go. Loomis thinks they're going to be two to three laps shy. I think everybody's going to be two or three laps shy, Mike. Now, Dick, those last pit stops were occasioned by Johnny Benson, who one lap earlier came in and topped off, and then so did several of these lead lap cars. Trust me, I can make it. You just got to tell me how far I got to go. Tell the driver now what he's got to do, and he'll get it done for you. We got 62 to go. Get it done. Wrap it up. See what we got. These are trained professionals. They know how to milk these things right to the finish. Plus, those guys in the pits never tell the truth. 17 cars are on the lead lap as we get the restart. Jarrett, Steve Park, Earnhardt Jr., Gordon, and Harvick are now the front five. Not, not only that, but more than likely, we won't, <laughs> it never plays out anyway. Something will happen, and we'll have to all come back in, get tires and fuel, and Clear by change everything. On the 22. Dale Jarrett leads 10 more laps. He'll break the race record, set by Terry Labonte. Ward Burton is, is a lap down, right behind the race leader there. Seven different leaders, Jarrett, Park, Earnhardt Jr., Marlon, Benson, Labonte, Bobby Labonte, and Mark Martin. Fifteen lead changes, seven caution flags. Ward Burton in that 22 car, involved in that wreck earlier, trying to get one of these laps back. Dale Earnhardt Jr., he wants the lead. He goes underneath Dale and Jared in the 88 car. Jeff Gordon in the 24 car, he wants that second place position. Jeff Gordon's the man on the move. He's got a fast car, and I tell you, that's a big paying race. That's a money man. We've got a battle for fourth right here. 29 car, Kevin Harvick. He wants that position from Steve Park. But remember, Steve Park's car has not been good on the short run. But the thing I've seen Park do, he's lost to several positions, and the car doesn't seem to be nearly as good as it was earlier. And look, look who else has joined the club. <laughs> Our winner from last week, Big Mo. Big Mo is on the move, and I'm in the hunt. I got a car in the wall at turn Kenseth. two. Matt Kenseth spins at turn two. And this will put us under caution once again. Is anybody trying to get a yeah, lap back? Yeah, Burton, Burton, Burton 22. Is. He's and trying to get that comes. lap back. Here he comes. Junior moved up and let him go. But 20, 20 cars on the lead lap. See what happened to Matt Kenseth. He just gets up high, I believe. He gets in the corner a little high and he never gets it under him. He just keeps going up, up, up into the loose stuff. I think I can, I think I can, I think I know I lost it. Now, Larry, if you didn't come in for that splash of gas five laps ago, do you come now? If, if you're close enough, these cautions will help. Remember, two cautions equal one green lap. So if you're close to within one or two laps, you stay out because you can make it. You've made your bed. Lay now I gotta lay in it. <laughs> Tough day for Matt Kenseth. I'm not sure if you mentioned Ricky Rudd's car was pushed to the garage. He is out of the race. And I need to update on Ward Burton in the 22 car. He got one of his two laps back. He's now one lap down. But that puts him in a whole different class because there's a lot of cars that are one lap down. So it's going to make him have a little bit better finish if he can work his way back up through there again. 
Dale Earnhardt Jr. faked pit road, dove back on the racetrack, but his teammate Steve Park hit pit road. I don't think Park was happy with this car. He was falling no. back big time, and the car didn't look near as good as it had earlier. Steve Park is in, so is Kenny Schrader and Dave Blaney. Steve? Mike, I think this is going to be a gas and go. They discussed whether or not to stop. Steve said the car's loose. He likes it that way. It is gas only for the one car. Dave Blaney is also in. Steve Park headed back down pit road. Blaney, a quick in and out for Bill Davis's team. And a number of cars a lap down also stopped. That's the youth. That's the young guys. My car's loose, and I like it that way. Older guys said, my car's loose, and I'm coming in. Watch this fake by Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I'm coming in. I'm coming in. Jarrett's going to follow him. Gordon's going to no, follow him. Jarrett no, didn't they're follow not him. That's when okay. Jarrett didn't follow him. That's when he came back out. As long as he didn't there, come, go down pit road and cut across the grass, he's good to go. There are no out of bounds in this sport. We are contained by big old concrete barriers. Everything inside of that is all fair play. So a little bit of subterfuge, but Dale Earnhardt Jr. hangs on to the lead under this eighth caution flag of the day. You're watching Winston Cup Racing on Fox, presented by the Home Depot. Fox tonight, the Simpsons go on safari. On the plane, I'm gonna need two seats for the twins. But when they get lost, can the animals help them survive? Maybe you'll lead us to bananas. Or more mouth-watering monkeys. An all-new Simpsons. Then, there are two sides to every story. Who's gonna drive us? I'll do it. I'll do it. And Malcolm's living both of them at the same time. You are gonna have so much fun. One complaint about your behavior and I'll come down on you like a hammer. An episode you've got to see to believe. What kind of parent would leave these kids alone with themselves? Okay, I'll see you in a couple hours. Malcolm in the middle. I love bowling. After The Simpsons, all new at 8, 7 Central tonight on Fox. Mulder's death was only the beginning. Fox tonight, The X-Files returns with seven consecutive new episodes and you can't imagine what happens next. You found him and you don't even know what you got. Tell me it's true. The X-Files, all new, starting at 9, 8 central tonight on Fox. Every move, every story, totally NASCAR, weeknights at 6. You don't see any empty seats here in Texas. First, because they were all sold in advance of the race, and second, because nobody knows who's going to win this thing, and nobody is leaving. Ain't nobody going home yet. Some Winston Cup races are coming up on our sister network, FX. If you don't get FX on your cable system, just call toll-free 1-800-FX-FX-FX-1. We'll connect you to your local cable company and tell them you want your NASCAR and you want your FX. 1-800-FX-FX-FX-1. Well, I know Steve Park said he couldn't make it. I know his crew said he couldn't, but man, I'd hate to be restarting in 15th place. From this, close, 15th. this close to the end of the show, mm, I'd have took my chances. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to gamble on gas. Here we go for green. I tell you, Kevin Harvick was all over the back of the 24 car on that restart. He was pushing him. Harvick's car has just gotten better and better as the day has gone on. And that's what we saw at Atlanta. We didn't talk much about him. He hung around the top five, but boy, when it comes showtime, he was showing out. Gordon knifes to the inside. Got to get through this traffic. Harvick caught up on the outside. Burton's got, oh, got a car up in the wall. It's a 40 car. Oh, it's Marlin, and he's hit it hard. Caution for the ninth time. Sterling Marlin, a contender. One of the two Dodges on the lead lap with Dave Blaney caught the wall hard up in turn three. Boy, that's unfortunate. He was running well. He was up in the top ten. Had trouble late in the race at Atlanta. Trouble late in the race here. He's get this boy cranked up and get her to the garage. Come in here third in points. Yes. Actually, you know, the car's torn up, but I don't see any damage that might not keep him from going. Get the sheet metal pulled off. Here we go down into turn three and four here, right in the middle, and there he is. And Rock Raw might want to take another look at that. Well, Darrell, one thing this caution will do is ease Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s concern about fuel mileage. That's why I would have not come in if I'd been Steve Park. Another angle of it. Whoa. I think he may have got a little push from Todd Bodine in the 66 car. 
I think he got a little shove. He's come to pit road. Sterling Marlin's come to pit road, yeah. and he's uh, back he, down pit road. He's going to beat the pace car. He hasn't seen the back of that car and know how badly it's damaged, but... No, but it, you know, the, the sheet metal is torn up, but the chassis and the wheels all look like they're going in the right direction. Probably can't get any fuel, then it's going to be his problem. But if he had enough fuel from the last time they pitted, they may not need to put no more fuel in. Spoiler, still up there where it needs to be. Might even be better than it was. Way up there, isn't it? Yeah. Which is good. Yeah, and he got no <laughs> rear bumper, no drag. Rear spoiler up is more rear downforce, isn't it, Jeff Hammond? What I saw when it came down pit road, those guys, is it's so short, I'm not too sure it's going to be as effective as it was right. a little while right. ago. Well, as you know, uh, the way the air flows no across the top of the roof, it may be up too close to not get a chance to really put the kind of pressure. It looked pretty bad when it came by me. Well, the only thing I'd be worried about is the track bar that runs across the rear end housing there. If that got stoved up in there and locks the rear end up, then he won't be able to drive the car. Now, he did not stop on pit lane because he did not want to lose a lap to the field. He wanted to come around, catch the tail end of the field, and now make Now, here he stop. comes. And See, that car. High tires, guys, right side. See, here's his, chat. here's his fuel cell and all down in here. None of that's knocked forward. But I believe, uh, I believe Jeff's right. He does. But look at the distance right the here forward. between the deck lid and the rear of the greenhouse. The yeah. rear barrier is awfully short, so that's that's not going to be good. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh it's definitely not going to be. Up. It's not a winning race car anymore, but he's going to be able to get back out there and, and finish. Yeah, and if he can keep from losing another lap, that'll certainly help him in the point standings. He came in here third in the points. Oh, we got to go. 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 Got to go. Got to go. Good now. Yeah. You only got to go 16 laps. And there's the fuel calculator. Is that Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s pit? It is. It's the engine tuner right here. He's looking at the fuel mileage based on uh, what he knows about the engine. That's Sean Clark. Yeah, Sean, uh, Sean Robson took. Yep, she competed in the Bush race yesterday, first of several that she'll drive this season. And every one of these caution laps they run, if they was a little iffy, there you see Jeff Clark, Clark, his name on the back of his uniform, that just helps ease the pain of the possibility of not being able to make it. That's Brad Parrott, that's Todd Parrott's brother, who's like the car chief on the 88 car, figuring that fuel mileage as well. And again, I'm sure if you was a little bit close, these caution laps, I keep stretching, two caution laps is like one green lap. Next weekend, we're at Martinsville, Virginia, as Richard Childress looks on with Kevin Hamlin. We'll have Winston Cup qualifying for you Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Time on Fox Sports Net. From the short track that thinks it's a super speedway, south of Roanoke, Virginia. Then final Winston Cup practice on FX Saturday at noon. And wall-to-wall -wall NASCAR on Sunday. NASCAR this morning on the net. The Winston Cup race coverage begins 12.30 Eastern Time on Fox. And then Victory Lane to wrap it all up at 9 p.m. Sunday night on the net. I won a lot of races on fuel mileage because I had one of the best, if not the best ever, in the pits calculating my mileage. And she knew more about it than the crew did. And that's my wife, Stephanie. She did a mighty fine job of getting DW home many, many a time on fumes. For more of Daryl's insight into NASCAR, you can check out the All Waltrip section on FoxSports.com. It has its own web address now, AllWaltrip.com. Yeah, that's All Waltrip. Daryl, Stevie, Jessica, Sarah, that's the whole family. We all have a little something going on there. And by the way, the transcript from uh, the interview I did with Dale Jr. is on that website this week. I think folks that look at the whole thing, they'd find it very interesting. And you're going to see more of that interview on Steve Burns' show, Totally NASCAR, at 6 p.m. your local time, all this coming week, Monday through Friday. We talked for an hour, and we could have talked all afternoon. It was really, uh, I enjoyed the conversation, and uh, we laughed, we cried, uh, and talked to, and told funny stories. It was really a, just an incredible time. Let's get down to all Jeff Hammond all the time. <laughs> dot com. Hey guys, one of the things I was noticing here today is a young, uh, gentleman right now that's up to number seven on the grid, and that's Kevin LePage. We haven't said a whole lot about him, but that guy right there, he's driving for a job. You know, yeah. he's trying to impress some people. Yeah. Last week in Bristol, he brought that car home 15th of the day, started way back, got her all up there to seventh place. Now, he will also drive this car at Martinsville next weekend. They, they test it there, and it's kind of a get-acquaintance session between he and the Morgan McClure team, three-race deal, and then we'll see what happens. It's kind of like we'll work for food, you know? It's kind of like Dayton before you get married. <laughs> That's what it's like. Yeah. All right, let's get this restart to begin lap 285 of 334. Earnhardt Jr. brings them down. That's Jason Leffler trying to get a lap back on the inside. Here we go. 
Well, the last thing you want as the leader of the race is to have to rake somebody off in that first turn, but Leffler's right there beside Junior. Clears him okay. Now Jarrett's got to deal with him. Leffler two laps down. Again, that's why sometimes you let fast cars go when you get a chance to, uh, when the caution comes out, so you don't have a fast car up there you got to race. Behind Dale Jarrett as you're watching the UPS cam, Jeff Gordon closing it right in. Boy, they're getting three wide back here now. I mean, the outside line is, is really working, and these guys are making some incredible passes. And here's Steve Park and Dave Blaney, who made late pit stops under caution, trying to make up some ground. He's got to go. He's got no choice, man. He's got to get back up front. He's got to get up there in a hurry. Can't let these leaders get away from him, or he has no chance. Inside Park is 13. Clear inside. Restarted this last cost after this last cost in 15. They're all around. Folks, being 13th right at this stage is being in row 80 of this parking lot after this race is over. Gonna be stuck there a while. But just look at the distance he's got to make up. There he is at the start finish line now. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is already in the middle of turn one and two. That's a lot of ground to make up in about 47 or 48 laps. Only way that frown on his face is going to go away is if all these other guys run out of gas and he They're doesn't. All around. And that's the only thing he can hope for. But his team told him he could not make it on fuel. He needed to stop, so he did get a splash under that caution. And now it's put him in the hole. You pull a lot of gear. You run the thing, you know, with the with to work in the engine real hard, you're going to burn a lot of fuel. You make a lot of power, you burn a lot of fuel. For second place, Jeff Gordon has caught Dale Jarrett. This is Gordon's worst racetrack. He had finished with a battered car 25th here last year. Otherwise, he's not finished the race here. And he came in here, I asked him, and he, he came in here determined to turn this place around. He said, this place has bit me every time I've been here. I'm going to conquer it this time. 45 to go. This also is our first and second place guy in the points. Dale Jarrett's got a 45-point lead over Jeff Gordon in the 24 car. I know it's early, but we look at points all year long. And there's the gap to the leader. And did we mention that the winner of this race will win about $400,000? And that 24 car, I don't know if he's got dollar signs in the steering column or what he's got, but when there's big bucks at stake, he steps up, man. What Dale Earnhardt Jr. needs, he needs these two guys to keep racing each other hard back there, and he can try to keep stretching that lead out. He's pulled out to a 1.3 second lead right there. There you see the difference on your screen. Kevin LePage still on the move. Back up on the lead lap. A couple of cautions ago, he got his lap back. It wouldn't surprise me to see something like, like what we saw at, at Atlanta, Mike. I tell you, between Dale Jarrett, Jeff Gordon, and Dale Jr., that's going to be the race. And Darrell Steve Park is coming. He's now to the inside of Todd Bodine. 6.6 .6 seconds off the lead. He got past Rusty Wallace and Dave Blaney and Terry Labonte. This is the battle for 8th, 9th, 10th, and 11th right here. Kevin Har Harvick beat Jeff Gordon in Atlanta. Could be Dale Jr.'s turn. And now Park trying to work Johnny Benson. 7.2 seconds back. Long way to go. Yep. Short time to get there. Got to turn the wick up. Well, he's 10th seven seconds but he's also got eight cars it's not going to let him go by easy Rolling when he gets to him ahead. yeah he's got a got a fast horse but he needs a bit of clear range ahead of him well just to give you an idea here comes junior off turn four right here he is at the line now and parks in the middle of three and four lots and lots of distance to make up and he's hung up in traffic behind some good race cars the ten and the six These cars all battling for eighth place. That's where Mark Martin, the sixth car, is. Hey, these guys get real serious about a top ten finish, you know? I mean, they, they work hard to stay in the top ten. They're not going to pull over and let you go. 
15 cars on the lead lap. Johnny Benson in the 10 car. He opened the door Todd against Mark Martin. Inside. Steve Park goes with him. Todd Bodine at 66. He wants it too. But let me tell you, that 21 car, that 97 car, a couple of young guys are right there nipping on their heels. Todd Bodine right back there. Blaney coming, continuing to try and move up. That's one of those lead lap cars who also made a late stop for gas. There's Blaney, 93. Clear. That late stop, you're just hoping that some of those guys that didn't stop maybe Five. can't make it on yeah. fuel. And there goes Blaney down on the inside of Mark. He's right on the bottom of the straight Clear. track. He beats Clear. them getting in the corner. He beats them getting off. Really, really Five. gets in strong. Now Martin has Rusty Wallace to battle and Ken Schrader moving in. Well, Rusty Still lost there. so much time when all Clear. that incident in the pits, and now he's got to fight his way back up into the top ten. Rusty's had an up and down day. I mean, he started way back, got up to the top three or four, and then had that trouble in the pit. Ken Schrader right there in the 36 car, remember, and got a lap down a while ago, got a lap back. How about Terry Labonte in the five car? Mark Martin really starting to slide backwards. The gr degree of intensity picks up so much when you get down in inside the last 25 or 30 laps. All of a sudden, guys that were giving you a little something, they won't give you anything a hard time. 38 laps to go. Earnhardt Jr. here with a 1.2 second lead on Dale Jarrett. That's what 1.2 looks like. And then Jeff Gordon. And even lap cars. I mean, there's races going on with everybody, you know, and even lap cars won't give you a break. Asked uh, Ward Burton, who had just made a pit stop. As you look from Bill Elliott, and Elliott is 16th, the first of the cars one lap down. Benson and Park resume their battle. This time, it's for eighth place. Park's got the nose under, but man, he's got to squeeze it in there. Whoa! He knows he can't wait. He catches them. He's got to pass them. Can't be held up by somebody. And now are... this battle is nine, almost ten seconds behind the leader. Trouble for Todd Bodine after a lead lap run all day. He's coasted onto pit road. He's Here's going, the turn for the garage. Going to the garage. Mm, tough day. Tough way to finish. You've been on the lead lap all day. Nobody will know. <laughs> exactly. It won't show up in the results, is what I mean. See Gordon working around. Here's Earnhardt Jr. He's opened up to 1.57 seconds. We talked about young guns at the top of the show, and here's Earnhardt, the leader, and Elliot Sadler in fourth. Last week, he just got his top five finish, Sadler did, a and victory, and here's in the top five. Not only that, but Kevin Harvey, Kurt Busch, all these are kids. I mean, they're young guys that are really making their mark and making their presence felt in this sport today. Everybody always worries about the future of the sport. Every time something happens, drivers retire or whatever, what's going to happen to the sport? Well, folks, you're watching what's going to happen to it. Look at this. We got 10 drivers that are under the age of 29 years old. We got 20 drivers between 30 and 39. Look at these drivers over 40, 17 of them. But this is the number right here, 30 drivers under the age of 40. Look at this, Harvey, 25, Sadler, 25. Gordon, 29. Park, Michael, Dale Jarrett. Those are all winners this year. Look how young those boys are. And here's Dale Earnhardt Jr. trying to join that list and join his teammates, Michael Waltrip and Steve Park, in finding victory lane in what for Dale Earnhardt Jr. has been the most difficult of times. We'll be right back. I know a lot of things now that I didn't know before. A real man can fix toilet. I don't know everything. Uh, nice to know things are done right because you did it. This is everything I ever wanted. He knows everything there is to know about everything. Did you listen to the guy? We go to Home Depot for advice anyway. I live for Saturday. I asked the people at Home Depot and they told me how to do it. They improved me, I improved my house. This is why I come to Home Depot. First, the Home Depot. First in home improvement. Dear Torch Committee, I'm the bus driver at Lincoln Elementary. I take the kids to school and I see Janet out there at the crosswalk every day making sure the kids get across the street safely. 
She doesn't get to sit or have a heater like me and feel she's out there rain or shine. I nominate crossing guard Janet Regan for the torch relay. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, Max Life conditions you seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your tires looking great, use Eagle One Wet Tire Shine. NASCAR on Fox tears into Martinsville with a race for the Winston Cup title is getting nasty. Winston Cup Racing, next Sunday on Fox. Last Wednesday, 16 ordinary people came face to face with four real-life drill instructors. Then don't use these anymore! No, sir! And live to tell about it. Who can't kick your butt? Save the drama for your mama and push. No! But they ain't seen nothing yet. No! Discover the most intense reality series ever. And that's when he gets in your face and spits all over you. I can't stand him. I don't even think his mother loves him. Food Camp at 9, 8 Central, Fox, Wednesday. Still a packed house. 147,000 in the grandstand, plus that big infield crowd. The seats and the suites are full as you watch from the Budweiser.com airship here at Texas Motor Speedway. As Dale Earnhardt Jr. tries to score back-to-back -back victories at this track. And you know what? After talking to him Monday like I did, and that sweet face, that sweet little boy out there driving that car at 190 miles an hour. And, and he's going to have his hands full before this thing go with, because I believe Jeff Gordon will chase him down. We could have an Atlanta finish here. He started on the pole, and the pole sitter has not won a Winston Cup race since September of last year. Dale Earnhardt Jr. finished second in the Daytona 500. Since then, his best finish was 15th at Atlanta about three or four weeks ago. All this could do is you talk, Darrell, get that momentum back on your side. Oh, boy. They came here with so much optimism, and they were so excited about coming here. Same car, same result. He sat on pole. That was a big surprise for him. I mean, he is pumped up. He was ready. He had his game face on this morning. I, I can tell he's, he's going to be in it for the end, to the end. No emotional letdown there today. Tony Urey Jr. and Senior told me this morning they were so happy with their car in the final practice, but they just they didn't know what to feel about it because one week ago at Bristol, they was one of the best cars in happy hour, and he said we would drop the green flag. It's like somebody had swapped cars on us. Mm. So even though they was optimistic about today, they, they wasn't sure what to expect. There's nothing. I, I love a happy car. Boy, just give me a happy car, and I can go to race. I can race all day. Happy car makes happy driver makes happy crew chief. You got it. Here's a fellow who's two seconds think, away from being happy, box. Dale Jarrett. That's the time he lacks from the lead. Two seconds and just six-tenths of a second behind him. There's Jeff Gordon, third-place car. Park. Park is almost a half a lap down. And here are the young guns. Sadler and Harvick, two 25-year-olds battling for fourth place. And again, just out of our picture is Kurt Busch, who's only, what, 20 years old. So uh, got some young guys here that are really showing a lot of talent. Harvick makes the pass, has way Sadler. up toward the wall, and in the wall goes Sadler. I think he must have cut a tire down. We're still green. The caution no, is not. out. Caution, yeah, caution is out. Boy, that's why I don't think anybody really wanted to see this caution. And I know Dale Jr. didn't. This could change everything. Well, yeah, Daryl, they've got to come to pit road. They've oh, got to yeah. get four yeah. tires. you got to get four tires, and now you just worry. The crew chief worries, the driver worries. What if I get the worst set of tires I've had all day? And it happens so many times. You don't know why. Does anyone dare gamble and stay out? Oh, no. I don't think so. Oh, no, no, no. We've been, we've been so. Going. But I, but I like Dale Earnhardt Jr.'s situation. He's got that end pit. His crew has had good stops all day. He can get right out. So this is when those guys got to have that good stop for Yeah, you. I've been lonely too long. I want to come visit my crew. Right front is down on Sadler's car as he comes to pit road. Now this brings it. I tell you who this makes a player again. You can deal him back in. Is the one car. You gotta come down and get four tires. You still got uh, 20 some laps to go, so you gotta get four tires. You up to the pressure drop? 
Yeah, these, these guys have been out there 40 to 50 something laps on these tires. They'll be on pit road. Earnhardt Jr. dummied them last time, fainted to pit road and shot back out behind the pace car. This time, no oh, way. The only Not dummy even. would be the one that stays That's out. Right. <laughs> These guys are down here waiting on him like a bandit waiting on a train. Hey, Benson stayed out. He did stay out. He did stay out. Johnny Benson, the one lead lap car that stayed There's on the race There's nothing wrong. Track. I mean, that's a great stretch. You can't win. No. Steve? Now, Jared, tires are on. He was complaining that the car was a little bit loose going into the turn and having a little bit of trouble getting off. Let's get to Matt Yoakum. Gordon is out. The A-car four tire stop. Their worst stop all day. 15.8 park goes by. As they drop the jack, they will beat them all up here. Well, as we said, this changes everything. It changes the whole complexity of it. When the guys needed a good stop, everything needed what to go happened? their direction, it uh, fell apart right there. That's what I say. You did, the, the worst, he was the guy that did not want to see a caution play. No. Not because he thought he was going to have trouble in the pit, but because he was there. Jeff Gordon, who is not led today getting a good stop and he is not the leader as Johnny Benson stays on the racetrack. Benson he is the new leader. Well this is when Dale Jr. They, they've got to talk to him and they've got to focus him and they've got to keep him calm. He's going to be upset because he lost the lead. Uh, the stop didn't go well. Now's when they're talking to that driver. The caution came out for Elliot Sadler who crashed up at turn two. Let me show you what happened. And he was just having a great day. I mean, the car was running there, and I think there's something wrong. You can't even turn the car down. You see all that dust and dirt flying up behind it. Dick, what happened? Well, we're not really sh sure, but uh, there's a possibility something broke in the steering box. He, in fact, is having trouble steering the car right now. The crew is still on the wall. Possibility he's going to come back in again and see if they can get it fixed. Oh, he just radioed. Oh, I guess he is coming. Yep, he will be coming back in again, Mike. When he pitted, the right front tire was down. That may have been from contact with the wall. Yeah, and or it may have been what percent damage on the right side over there. So he would have to come back in, even if it was uh, the car was all right, because he got sheet metal rub or down on the right side over there. Well, Dale Earnhardt Jr. came into the pits with the lead and came out ninth. Remember, Benson did not pit, so he came in, came in first and came out eighth of those who pitted. Just gonna have to suck it up, everybody. You can do it. You still got a fast car and you've been driving by these guys. That's what you got to do now. You got to suck it up and go. Tonight on Fox, can the Simpsons survive being lost in the jungle? An all-new Simpsons. And when Malcolm's family goes bowling, who ends up in the gutter? An all-new Malcolm. Mulder's death is not the end, only the beginning on an all-new X-Files, and it all starts with an all-new Futurama and King of the Hill tonight on Fox. Here, we've got an all-new race after this 10th caution flag of the day that puts Johnny Benson up front, who did not make a pit stop, along with Jeff Gordon, who did, Kurt Busch, Mark Martin, Dave Blaney, and Dale Jarrett. Dick? Well, Elliot Sadler had his first top five finish ever last week when he won in Bristol. He was running in the top five when this incident happened. He has called his crew and said he's still having trouble steering the car. They're working in the front end of the car trying to get it so that Sadler could at least drive it somewhat. What a disappointment. They thought they were going to have two top fives in a row. Well, we saw Steve Park start in 15th place. And it took, he was not making that much progress as far as moving through the field. And Junior's starting in eighth place. He's got his work cut out for him, too. Darrell, this is the reason I love this sport, though. Football, baseball, basketball, somebody's got a, a 10 or 12 run lead or point lead, you know, with a couple of seconds to go. You can go home. You can know what happened. You can't leave one of these races till the checkered flag waves. This is like hitting four three-pointers in a row, just coming down and knocking the bottom out of it three times and catching up. Here's where they came in and went out of the pits. As we get set to go back to green. Man, look at that. Killed him. How about Dave Blaney started last, 43rd. He's fifth. And there is Dale Jr. Going to take this restart for ninth. There is Blaney in the 93. Who's just had a just had a stellar day. Yeah, and Kurt Busch is third. Mark Martin, this is a pretty good day for Jack Rowe.
What, what's good for these cars that took two tires, it will be a double file restart because we're going to have 18 laps to go. And so not only are those cars behind them with four tires going to have to fight those cars, they'll have to fight the lap cars. And we're going racing with 18 to go. I still don't see an empty seat because this is far from seven. Oh, they're all empty. It's because they're standing up. Green flag. Look at Junior. He's all over the back of Harvey. Kevin Harvick didn't get the greatest restart, left a lot of gap there. Just got to bide your time, guys, in the, you got to work your way by these cars. What do you call this, Daryl? Aggressive patience? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's knowing when to hold them and when to fold them. You better start unfolding them right now. Bill Elliott in the middle of all this. James Ince has made a gamble. He left Johnny Benson, his driver, out on the racetrack when everyone else pitted. And Benson's holding on to a pretty fair lead. Well, if that pays off, I'm going to quit try. I'm going to quit making predictions. You and me both. <laughs> if that works, like you said, that's the great thing about this. You never know. But last week, Elliot Sadler stayed out on a set of tires, stayed out on a set of tires, and won the race. Kurt Busch, that white car. Fourth in line, a couple more young guns, Harvick and Earnhardt Jr. About a lap ago, Dale Earnhardt Jr. got a good run on Harvick, but a lap car was in his way, and he lost a lot of momentum down the front stretch. Just doesn't have enough time to get back up there, I don't believe. Rusty Wallace tracking Earnhardt Jr. Wallace in 10th place after getting uh, punted across pit road. And you know, the harder you try late in the race like this, you drive it in too hard, start trying too hard, and you actually go slower. That's why you got to have a crew chief that's really, really working with you, talking to you, keeping you focused. Bill Elliott in the nine car now, he's one lap down, but he is in the 14th position, so we have 13 cars on the lead lap. And except for Elliott, those first 10 cars in line are all lead lap cars now. Check interval here at the line. 15 to go, 14 now. Well, Benson's already made the guns I thought he was going to do. I would have had, I would have never thought that he could have held them off that way. See, Steve Park, he was the fastest that time. And he's all over the back of Jared and got a run on him off of two. The battle for fifth. I believe Jeff Gordon will get around the, the 10 car here when the time comes. I'm Dave Blaney, the 93 car. He was the fastest. You heard Todd Parrott tell Dale Jarrett just to take his time, be patient. He was doing good. Well, that one car, it really gets a, it leaps off of that second turn and onto that back straightaway. He gets a shot off that corner. Here he comes. He's trying to get the nose under Jarrett right there. And Jeff Gordon has caught the leader. Gordon is there, just two car lengths off of Johnny Benson. I mean, a football field covers the first 10 cars. Harvick the fastest that time. And there's Kurt Busch has worked his way past the lap car of Bill Elliott. And here comes Harvick. Blaney on the bottom underneath Elliott. Look at Blaney. We've got four cars I'll here to fight for the lead. I'll tell you what, don't count Blaney out. Boy, Junior drove the car into turn three that time and took it way up the track. 11 laps to go. Any of the front five could win this. I want you, you know, Kurt Busch is right there, guys. I mean, here's the, the, here's the kid that's right there. And there's Blaney. When he came from dead last to be up there. And oh. look at Gordon. He is all over the back of that Pontiac. Right Gordon. now, he knows that Johnny Benson's got those old tires up there on that rear bumper, gets you a little bit loose up off the corner. Well, he's being pressured, too, and he knows that rookie's back there, and he's going to be hungry. Blaney coming on the high side for third place. You see him on oh the side. Oh, boy, there's the comes Blaney up on the outside. I, that isn't going to work. He got a heck of a run off turn two, there on that high side. I like what he's thinking. You can't pass him if they won't move up off the bottom, but here comes Bush underneath Gordon. Gordon went high to try to get by Benson. Kurt Bush can take that second position. And now you've got two drivers in the first two spots, three of the first four that have never won. And Park right there. Park right there with them. And Jarrett. 
and Vincent is really, he's loving every minute of this. They're racing behind him, and he's getting a little away. He's getting away from them just a little bit. Steve Park pulls to the inside. He wants to get in there before they get to turn three. And now any of six of them can win this race. And Harvick's not that far back, and Junior isn't either. Time, though, running out. Eight laps to go. And let me tell you, Vincent is doing an outstanding job of holding these guys off. And no matter what happens to Johnny Benson, I got to tip my hat to him and James Dent made that call. I'm like you, Daryl. I never would have thought this would have worked. I wouldn't either, but I'm telling you, this thing's looking pretty good for him right now. Garrett to the inside for third place. Underneath Blaney and takes it. Blaney's trying to run that real high line. I don't think that's the way to go right now, Dave. Look at the run. Steve Park got in that one car, though, right through the middle of the corner on the bottom. Pulled right up to the back of Dave Blaney. Blaney couldn't find anywhere to go around the bottom. Everybody's tying up the bottom, so he's trying the outside, but I don't think that's a hot tip. Dale Garrett looks to the high side, realizes it didn't work. Whoa, man, inside. what a run he got off of. Gordon pushed, and he takes the second position. Gordon pushed off a two, and he had to lift. And here comes the one car with him. Steve Park underneath Blaney. Park moves up to fourth. What a run Dale Jarrett got off turn two. He did. I think, I think Gordon pushed and he had to lift. Right here, yeah. It's Benson, Jarrett, Gordon, Park, Blaney, Bush, Harvick, and Earnhardt. Boy, this is so much like what we saw in Atlanta. Five or six cars, last few laps of the race, fighting for the lead. Look at He's going to go for him on the high side. Off turn two, he takes the lead halfway down the back stretch. Got another incredible run off of turn two. Clear low. That's going to be hard to beat. Five Man. laps to go next time by. That was horsepower right there. Horsepower and great driving. Blew right by that Pontiac. Five Blew right by the Benson. The top eight cars are single file right now. Five laps today. to go. Dale Jarrett got a launch off turn two like we haven't seen. You know, he passed Gordon that way, and I thought something happened to Gordon, but I believe he's just that much better off that corner than everybody. And he's driving away from these guys right now. These four to go next time. Steve Park wants his second position. He wants a chance at Dale Jarrett. Hard to make a pass on the outside. You get a lot of momentum, but you can't go anywhere with it. Four now, look at five tracks. Look at the gap. Six tenths of a second to Benson. And let's watch and see how Jarrett gets off turn two and just rockets off there. See, it holds about 65 hundredths of a second there. Oh, here comes Park on the outside. He's going around Benson on the outside. And look at Jarrett picks up three tenths coming off turn two. He runs two. up the racetrack a little bit, over a second going into turn three right there. Runs up the racetrack, turn two, gets a heck of a run down that back stretch. New second place car, Steve Park. But go. just three to go. On the one. Those old tires are starting to show up. The longer they run, the more Benson's going to have trouble holding these other guys off. Here goes Gordon. He's going to try it on the outside, but Bush is there. Bush takes the position away. He's on the inside of Gordon. Just smooth with your throttle. Fourth place, Kurt Busch on the outside, hammering along. Johnny Benson's loving this. He's loving these guys running side by side behind him. Next here comes, here comes Bush. He's got Gordon. Two laps to go. What a drive by Kurt Busch, young man. What a ride. These kids are exciting to watch. They get me all excited because I don't get to watch them for a long time. But it's the old gunslinger, Dale Jarrett, who's out in front of this field with a lap and a half to go. Remember, he's using that race car he won Darlington with about two weeks ago. Brought it here to Texas. Bush working on the back of Benson now, and if he can get a run white on him. Flag this time. White flag. White flag. Might be able to get a run on him off a of two over there. Jarrett's home free. I don't think anybody's going to get to him. Parks in second. Got a good gap back to third. The race is for third. Here, Here comes Bush. Comes Look. Bush up off a of two. Clear by eight. Can't make the pass. I believe that move by Benson is going to get, at least get him third place, Larry. He needs to protect the bottom right there. Hold on to her from... Off the you are the man, baby. And Dale Jarrett gets his second win of 2001. Steve Park holds second, and Johnny Benson hangs on to third ahead of Kurt Busch and Jeff Gordon. Way to go, driver. Dale Earnhardt Jr. comes home eight. After starting on the pole and dominating the race, like he did last year, the eight car comes home eight. Second opening at the Busch garage, and then turn back in towards victory. 26th career victory. For Dale Jarrett. Here's Steve. Thanks, Mike. With Todd Parrott. He's talking to Dale Jarrett right now. Todd, how'd you win that race? What'd you do to that race car? Um, got Dale Jarrett behind the wheel and uh, an awesome pit crew. 
Um, good last set of Goodyear Eagles. He come on the radio with about 15 to go. Said this thing's friggin' plowing, and um, he just got on top of the wheel and drove his heart out. And then um, just my hats off to all these guys. Great job. Uh, just tickled to, tickled to death. I right, go celebrate. Thanks. It's the first time this year that a driver who has led the most laps has won the race. And it's the second time this year that Jarrett and Park have finished 1-2. Great finish for Benson. The rookie Kirk Bush, impressive in fourth. Jeff Gordon ends up fifth. Dave Blaney, strong performance for Bill Davis. Kevin Harvick, Earnhardt Jr., victim of a tough pit stop. Falling to eighth. These are all lead lap cars down. Oh, Kenny Schrader got tenth. That was a good run for him today. After being a lap down. Yeah, got a lap down and still finished tenth. Ward Burton got all kind of trouble and still finished twenty-first. Todd Bodine retired with engine problems, finishes thirty-fifth. Ricky Rudd, after a good strong run all day, ends up thirty-seventh. And Bobby Labonte, forty-second. Man, I never thought I'd see that. And we have our first repeat winner in the last 10 races now. Isn't it amazing how the old veterans, when it's time to go, they always seem to have a little left. And the kids go home shaking their head. How's them old men do that? And the point standings, Dale Jarrett's lead. Now 75 over Jeff Gordon. That's an increase of 30 points. Johnny Benson, a strong third. Steve Park. How about Kevin Harvick? missed a race did not run daytona 245 points out but in 10th position not only that the car owner points i bet richard childress is probably in the top three because they accumulate his points plus dale earnhardt's points for daytona in the three car Like, and we don't like Very it. popular man right now. Sometimes you can just jump right into Steve Park. Now, you really had to drive the wheels off this car. She had to stop for gas. You, you exhausted, I would imagine. Yeah, I'm, I'm tired. We were, we were driving, a, we were driving the heck out of that uh, Pennzoil Chevrolet today. And uh, my hat's off. I just want to thank you know, uh, Chevrolet. Goodyear brought a great tire. Pennzoil. We're in their home state. We wanted to win it for them, for Jim Postal and everybody back at uh, Pennzoil. But um, we're just getting tired of following that 88 around. <laughs> I'm getting to know what his back of his car is looking like real good, and, uh, and we don't like that right now. But we'll take second. Another good day for the Pennzoil team. Paul Andrews, Dave Sharpentier, Kevin Mannion, everybody. Just a fantastic job all day long. I just want to say hello to my mom and dad. There you go. Congrats, and we'll catch up with you when you have the 88 in the rearview mirror as well. Mike Joy? Great run for Steve Park today. And you see right above Park's car behind Pit Road, our NBNA winner's circle. For Dale Jarrett, stands for the second time this season. In the top six, you got a Ford, Chevrolet, Pontiac, and a Dodge. Back to that parody thing. Parody's again. looking pretty good. Twenty-third Super Speedway win for Jarrett. Twenty-sixth career win overall, and his second win here okay. in Texas. Third time that a Ford has won at Texas. Matt Yoakum. Well, Dale Jarrett, a big smile, 26 win. Does it get any more exciting than that one? Uh, no, it doesn't, man. Uh, these guys did an awesome job, and uh, I want to thank UPS uh, for coming on board this year. I didn't get to do that last time. Thanks to everyone there. They've been fantastic. All of our other sponsors, Coca-Cola, Fleetwood, uh, Planners, uh, Ford Credit. Uh, just thanks to everybody. Got some more money here for the Susan G. Cummins Foundation, and uh, just what a great day. This pit crew's incredible, and uh, this whole team is. Uh, engine fantastic. I uh, want to thank God for a safe race and for allowing me to be with these guys. And, uh, man, this is really special to win here. A great racetrack. Good run for the 88. Now let's go to Dick with Dale Jr. And a great run for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Even though you didn't win, you sure showed him what the front of the pack was like. Tell us about that last pit stop. Yeah, we uh, come in, and I decided to take four tires because I thought that's what would win the race, and it did, but not to set wheels on anyways. Uh, it was a little bit tighter that last run than it had been all day. Uh, plus, we were behind a lot of cars, taking error off the front. But at least you guys over here talking to me. This is better than what's been going on so the past couple of weeks. So we're pretty happy. We got something good we can take home. You did a great job. Let's go to Steve Burns. Thanks a lot, Dick. Jeff Gordon. Jeff, you finished fifth. Tell us about your day. Tell us about the end of the race. Well, considering our track record here at Texas, a uh, fist like a wind to us. Uh, although we did have a better car than that, uh, we gambled, took two tires, and I think it was a, the right decision. I just I got stuck on Benson. My car was so tight, I just couldn't get by him. I was a lot faster than him, 
and then um, you know when I got stuck behind them, they just here came the four come the four tires, and they just blew right by us, and he ended up with the top five. It's a good day for the Dupont Chevrolet. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Let's go to Chris Myers. All right, hopefully you'll be with us next week. Look at the fans. Uh, they go home uh, satisfied. More than 200,000 here at Texas Motor Speedway. They'll have a big crowd at Martinsville. You'll see qualifying Friday on Fox Sports Net. Saturday, the final tune-up for the race on Sunday. That's on FX at noon Eastern, 9 Pacific. And Mark Martin, your defending champ at Martinsville. On Sunday, you'll see the race on Fox, the pre-race show at 12.30 Eastern. NASCAR this morning on the net gets it started. And Victory Lane wraps things up. A number of things to talk about, Jeff Hammond. Dale Jarrett, the first repeat champion as you get a look at Victory Lane of this season. He is the points leader back-to-back -back and adds to that now for a third straight week. What caught your eye down the stretch? She what caught my eye was some great racing today. I'm telling you, this was very exciting. Texas is getting better and better each year we come back. But golly, what about the run and the, the guts that Johnny Benson's crew pulled out? I mean, they stayed out there, almost won this race. But how about my buddy, Kurt Busch? I worked with him last year, and I'm just so excited for that young man. New crew chief, everything's coming their way right now. Good time for them. A terrific finish, an exciting race with Jeff Gordon, Dale Jarrett dueling down the stretch. And there is Dale Jarrett. He is the star in the Lone Star States. It began with defending champ on the pole, Dale Earnhardt Jr. A number of mishaps early in the race and then for a while running green and fans who set a record this weekend, more than 400,000 fans from Friday through Saturday and this race today, watching a number of cautions. Casey Atwood having some trouble. Dodge Sterling Marlin was in the hunt once again. But in the end, it was Dale Jarrett, the points leader, the star in the Lone Star State. Thanks for watching Fox.